that bring the meeting to order? Are there any changes or uh, additions to the agenda as presented? Yes, I do have two changes. Um, let me see. Uh, the Welcome Center uh, and the spending on that, we're looking at getting the first uh, tranche of money uh, in between uh, now and our next meeting. So I'd like to work on kind of prior approval for spending that. Okay. Uh, and uh, we got a uh, noise waiver request from Field Days. Okay. Any board members have any changes or additions? Okay, not seeing any. I am going to really strive to keep us on schedule. If we run to the schedule, we'll be here until 1030. So I'm going to try to make sure that uh, every one of these items keep to moving. With that, I did want to just mention, remind everyone this Saturday, May 22nd, the Arboretum's ribbon cutting, and they're uh, inviting everyone to participate. And it'd be certainly good for select board to be there if they're able to. With that, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of May 3rd? So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? <clears throat> Eben, you are muted still. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, Eben didn't notice I caught you when I turned off the mute. <laughs> uh, do we have a second for the way, uh, motion from Beth. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Rosemary, you got the floor. I don't have too much for tonight. Um, you want to go through the budget status report? Or you want to wait to do that more thoroughly at your next meeting? Uh, probably we will have to at our next meeting go through it more thoroughly. Is there anybody on the board that wants some questions answered? Not yet, but I'm, I'll just email you, Rosemary. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I'll email you if, you have, if I have questions. Okay. Um, and I sent you guys the delinquent taxes. And this is one of the most years we've, most amounts we've had for delinquents for a long time. I was looking at that and it seems like a lot of, or there, there obviously are some that have not made payments for the whole year, but uh, there seemed to be a, a fair number that did not make the fourth payment and uh, including the village of Johnson. What happened that's there? Not the, that's not the village of Johnson. Oh, it isn't. Okay. That's from the apartment house. They call themselves Johnson Village, I think, apartments. Oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering how the village of Johnson could be delinquent. But it, it does seem like a unusually high number yes. delinquent. Yeah. For sure, a quarter of a million dollars, right? Yes. Yeah. We got about $20,000 today, but that's a small drop, drop in the bucket. Right. Yeah, of all the years I've been on the board, that's the largest one I've ever seen. Any theories or thoughts? I don't know. Maybe because it was on a Monday. But we haven't had even a lot of payments come in the mail after the 10th. I think a lot of people think they do the 15th, but still we're way past the 15th at this point. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably at our next meeting when we're gonna be talking budget discussions, it might be uh, nice to have an updated to that point on mm -hmm. the delinquent taxes as well. On the budget status report, the state has sent the school final figures, which is on the budget status report. They do a true up in April mm -hmm. and that's on there. Then okay. all the other thing I have was just the signing of the warrant. 
Okay, what sports pleasure? You have to go and sign something anyway? Yes, we will. So I guess everyone probably can come in and sign it. We're gonna have okay. to come in anyhow. Uh, the only other question, I noticed we're only 65% spent to the year, is that? We haven't made the transfers to the reserve funds and we haven't done our paving project yet. That's the main reasons why we're okay. so low. Okay. But once you add those in, it goes up okay. dramatically. So we'll have those trued up numbers when we meet next time. Yes. Anything further? No, I don't think so. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks Rosemary. Uh, I'm guess Eric, you're here for the racial justice committee report. Yeah, you guys ready for that? Yes. All right, I'll 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 do the best I can to, to cram this in. There's a lot going on. Um, so uh, one thing is that the chair of the committee, Rick Opperly, resigned um, at the last meeting. The village trustees will be appointing a new member, I imagine, at their, their next meeting. Um, and our last meeting was actually fairly contentious, and there was, I, th I think, a lot of confusion in a fairly long meeting. Uh, and so we've called a special meeting for this Thursday, the 20th, both to elect a new chair and potentially vice chair, uh, and also to put some new procedures in line so that we are more on target and focused. And another thing that would help us with being more on target and focused with our work is um, you know, I, I expressed the last time I reported to you folks that I was a little confused about our charge. Like, I think this committee was found with the best of intentions, uh, with a lot of good goals in mind. I'm going as fast as I can, Mike, uh, with a lot of good oh. goals in mind. And, uh, and, and I, and I, and I, and I, I volunteered to join this committee because when I saw this committee and the charge put to it, I, you know, as someone who works with all the kids in this community, and their families and you know and and i and i know what comes you know, the angles people come at this for I, I really thought there was a lot of potential for this issue of racial justice to be very divisive in our community and i really didn't want to see that happen and i joined this with the idea of like trying to get everybody on the same page and i think that was what it was founded in um but you know essentially we've, we've failed at that charge as we've heard at a lot of meetings lately this is a very, very divisive issue in our community. There's people that don't talk to each other. There are people that are angry at each other. There are, we haven't succeeded to make this an issue that everyone can get behind in the same way and 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 uh, focus on. So I, I'd like us as you know us as a committee and maybe you guys as select board members and certain the trustees to maybe help us out with that. Um, and I, you know, one of the things that I, that I love about our town government in Johnson, um, I did ask last week, last month for some guidance. This. I want to thank Nat Kinney for coming to our last meeting and providing a lot of good suggestions about where this work could go. But one of the things I really admire about the, the my experience with, with town government in Johnson is like everybody, all the select board members here are like, you guys really hold public service, you know, and like as high on the, your hierarchy like i really admire your commitment to the, the public good it seems the foremost in all of your minds you don't have an agenda other than doing that and so i'd like to appeal to that spirit um i sent brian story an email uh with a couple of links in it one uh about governor scott's letter to um the state department about requesting more immigrants and one about susanna davis uh the director of vermont's director of racial equity she made a speech up at uh MVU Johnson a month or so ago uh, that you can see the whole thing and it really addresses like kind of what we're, we're grappling with. And so um, I'd like to, to hear more from you folks about what we could do that everyone in the community can get behind because I'm feeling very much like we've divided our community in half on this. There's people who are like, it's a good idea and it's a bad idea. And that's just, I, I think we need to do better. Uh, and I'd ask you guys, you guys all represent your constituents really well. But at, on another level, part of your job is to be leaders, right? Is to sometimes take the lead on principle on, and not just be educated by your community, but educate your constituents as well. So um, I put also in my email to Brian that I hope he shares with you all, not any of those things, but my, but my 
uh, personal email and cell phone number. I'd love to have conversations with each and every one of you. Uh, if you have a minute or two, you can always hang up if I talk too long. It's a, I won't be offended. Um, I, you know, to hear what, what it is we can do in this committee that we can get our whole town behind that will advance this issue because it seemed so promising when it started and now it seems, it feels divisive to a lot of people. And I, I'd like to reset it in a way that we can do things. I mean, and I think a lot of that is the fault of, you know, there's politicians and there's media outlets and news outlets who use these issues divisively, right? When, when, when I say the words Black Lives Matter, man, that means something to one set of people and it means something entirely different to another set of people, depending on which politicians or news outlets you've listened to. Uh, and so, we, we need to stop listening to our Facebook feeds and social media and politicians who don't have our best interest in mind or media outlets and talk to each other and talk to experts. And I would say Governor Scott and Susanna Davis are our local experts on this. And if we listen to what they say and we talk together, we can maybe come up with something we can all agree on. And I'd really like to reset this over the summer um, where I can hear from each of you and relay it to the committee. You don't have to come to a long meeting and speak publicly. I'm happy to talk off the record with any of you about what you think is a good idea. Um, I would really like to hear from each of you if I can. Uh, Nat already provided us with a good deal of feedback, which I really appreciated. I'm gonna try to stop talking there. I really appreciate you guys' public service. I think you have all of our best interests in mind and I don't want the committee that I'm working on to be seen as divisive or controversial. This should be, easy to do things for our community that advance, make our community more welcoming to visitors, to people who live here, to people who are thinking about living here or opening businesses here, that it shouldn't be this hard, in my opinion. And I'd love to talk to what you guys think is the best thing to do. Um, there's an agenda item on uh, later about uh, funding a couple hundred bucks for a racial justice essay contest for the school kids in our community. Uh, with details to be fleshed out. I'll stick around uh, later if you have questions about that when that item comes up. But if any of you have questions now about the committee or anything I can do to uh, you know, give feedback, please let me know. Okay, with that, I'll uh, open up to any board members have any questions for Eric or on the racial justice. Mike? Uh, Eric, I wasn't trying to hurry you up. Uh, I actually got some dirt in my eye today and I was just trying to <laughs> kind of work it out but you still have uh about uh 12 more minutes left if you want to speak to more some more on this because you weren't supposed to start to 7 15 and you were going to go to 7 25 so you started early so you'll, if you got more to say say it i gotta tell you i asked brian story for 20 to 30 minutes and he was like uh you know they got a lot and i heard eric say earlier that even if you follow the engine you'll be till 10 30 so I, I got plenty to say, um, but but I think uh, I'd like to talk to each of you when I get the opportunity. I've spoken to several of you, the majority of you before on some other terms. So uh, if you've got questions for me, I'm happy to answer and we'll, we can dig into that uh, proposal later on. Um, but I, I just think, I just think, yeah. I think Nat would like to ask a question. Go ahead, Nat. Yeah, thanks. More of a comment or uh, a few remarks. Um, as, as Eric mentioned, I, I did attend that last meeting. And um, I, I just, it's important to me to um, say just how upset I was about how that meeting went. Um, and, and I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but, um, and so I'm really happy to hear uh, Eric's opening, opening remarks, um, sort of addressing some of those, those issues. Um, I, I Deeply appreciate what you said there, Eric. Um, I'm happy to see that in your coming uh, um, agenda, you'll, you're going to be talking about resetting. Um, I, I ask, suggest that maybe you talk in that meeting about the responsibilities of the chair, not just appoint a new chair, but talk about what the committee expects from the chair, but also what's expected of the committee members themselves um, to ensure particularly to ensure that when people show up to participate, their voices are respected um, because people aren't gonna participate if they feel like they're not. Um, and uh, Raven spoke at the village meeting last week about positive and productive conversations. And I thought that was really powerful and um, thank her for that. Um, I, I think the committee really has a responsibility, responsibility to set that tone 
And uh, I, I just think really great things can happen out of this committee. Um, so I, I uh, thank you for, for your remarks here. Yeah, I, I agree with you entirely. And, and the results of that last meeting, I think, are part of what's helping us to be like, hey, we need, we need better procedures. We need a better uh, focus on what the work is rather than, uh, you know, debating little side points that aren't part of what's important to the town uh, in this issue. So thanks for that. Beth, go ahead. Um, thanks, Eric. I am very encouraged by everything I'm hearing. Um, frankly, I'm, I maybe haven't voiced this, but I uh, haven't spoken out as much as I would like to have. I'm pretty outspoken generally, but I, there is definitely a, I don't want to go there factor in play. Um, but it, but I really appreciate, um, the resetting and reprioritizing and I have a lot to say, so I'll definitely be reaching out. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Well, uh, Eric, this is the second time that you have challenged us with, uh, giving, providing some direction for, uh, the, the racial justice group. I, I think we do owe you that. What I would suggest is after you are reorganized and have a new slate and get yourselves together, that we have, we'll dedicate some amount of time at the select board level and have the racial justice committee uh, participate in a meeting and, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, something like that to help you with, with some direction. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I, I know there was direction given at the outset and I just think a lot of the words we're using mean different things to different people. And, and so talking about what we can all agree on and get behind and providing some messaging and education that everyone can agree on is, is pretty important to this whole process. And I appreciate you making the time for us in the future, Eric. Thank you. Yep. Uh, understand that we're only half of the, uh, the parents here. You have the other parent over at the village side, but um, I'm sure if we provide some direction, it would, uh, carry weight on both sides. Okay, any further discussion? If not, thank you, Eric, and we'll be looking for you in a few minutes. Uh, Hugh, you got the floor. Hey, good evening, everybody. Evening. Hi, Hugh. I'm not doing video because I don't want to get ridiculed about my shaved head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You didn't realize there were stairs either, did you? All right, all right. A lot of pressure. Um, so anyways, uh, let's go with my report real quick. Uh, we've spent the past couple of weeks, well, I'd say three weeks, doing ditching up on the what I consider the south end of town. So for French, Waterman, River, Grow. Um, working on the ditching there. And once the ditching is done, um, the guys have come through and hydro seeded all of the uh, newly disturbed areas. So uh, we won't have any erosion problems. Um, no shortage of uh, people offering to take fill in this town. I can assure you, they see you on the road and 10 people are super interested in it. I, I feel like we should charge for it, but it's, uh, so that's what makes it pretty easy. Um, Roads are all in great shape. Uh, we, as soon as we could, we started grading them uh, pretty aggressively and got the, put the chloride to them. We kind of changed how we operate this year by heavily chloriding early, um, which I think will help really harden the roads up and uh, hopefully keep them from needing to be graded as often. And um, we're about 80% there with our chloride treatment. Um, I noticed that we dipped into this current budget last year um, in terms of chloride. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on that. I don't really want to make a habit of that, but apparently that occurs pretty much every year from what I understand. Um, and that's pretty much, pretty much it. You, has the village reached out to you about requesting some of our fill? Uh, yeah, so we'll 
contacted me about uh, like a reservoir up on Collins Hill. Yes, uh, reservoir, yeah, up on uh, French Hill. Um, so, yeah, we talked about it. We're going to get together and figure out how much they really need and, um, and then coordinate. He told me it was Collins Hill, so I told him I would wait until we were working over in that neck of the woods. Okay, may maybe... Collins Hill is where the water reservoir is. Okay, so it's not the uh, water source up on French Hill. That's what I assumed he was referring to, but okay. Well, where, wherever, Hugh. I just, they had asked me about it, and I told them to reach out to you. Yep, yeah, we talked about it. Okay, good. Anyone, any, anyone got any questions for Hugh? No, but if you have any fill left. <laughs> <laughs> We're charging you, Ben. It's a hundred dollars right. a yard. <laughs> wow, we could make some money with that. <laughs> okay, and we'll see you in our next meeting. You're, you, is there anything left here in your report, Brian, that uh, Hugh would want to stick around for? Uh, I spoke to Hugh a little bit where, where uh, Hugh was able to complete the uh, employee evaluation for Mark Lapulier's six months. Okay. Um, I feel that I'm capable of kind of relaying, since we're not picking that up till later, of relaying what Hugh had has to report on um but i also kind of let him know that we might shoot him a message if we want to bring him in for that okay um, but if the board knows now that they definitely want you i mean my feeling is anyone who is the supervisor of an employee we're reviewing i mean that's their job not yours brian uh, to give the review personally well, it is a written review that Hugh has filled out. Brian would just be sharing it with us. But if okay. you feel, if you think Hugh, there's value in having Hugh there, we can call him about when we get to that point. Yeah, I definitely don't have firsthand experience working with Mark. Yeah, if it's nothing more than written, I don't have a preference. But if it is more than written, then I would. Okay. Well, Hugh, keep your phone on. If we need you, we'll call you. Right, sounds good. Okay. Anybody got any further questions for Hugh? If not, going once, going twice. Thanks, Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, Peter, is he on? We're making good time, and I don't see Peter yet. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to rush everyone. I just want to make sure we stayed on. This is great. Are you kidding <laughs> me? Don't apologize. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Is there anything that we could take up that would be very short? Well, our the essay writing contest isn't going to, I don't think it's going to be too long. And that can make pretty good, uh, that might okay. work out well for Eric uh, since he's here now. And he may or may not want to stick around for the rest of our meeting if we can get to and try and just tackle the essay writing contest before we go into uh, uh, Peter's presentation. Okay. So why don't we uh, go ahead, just fill us in, uh, Eric, what the uh, group is thinking. Yeah, so what I know about the project is pretty basic, just that uh, there's an idea of, as a, an essay writing contest uh, and they, the racial justice committee would like to be able to uh, facilitate some prize money for winning uh, entries. Um, some of the more details and everything. I'm going to turn it over to Eric, uh, who's got that information. Yeah, I mean, we, we didn't flesh out the whole thing. Um, you know, it, it, we wanted to get approval and or funding from the select board and the trustees before we move forward on that. But um, the Rutland area NAACP has done, has done something similar to this. They have some very good prompts and ideas. Um, and certainly uh, you're probably aware that there is a, um, a lot of summer programming going on in the schools this summer. And so it would be definitely another activity we could hold out to students in the district uh, or in Johnson on uh, 
how to reflect on these issues and 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 uh, maybe uh, win some prize money for uh, writing a, a stellar essay and get students and teachers talking about this. Um, this was an idea that I think was proposed by uh, Shane Spence, and we took it up and we we thought it was a good one. So we thought we'd throw it out to both the trustees and the select board for your feedback and or support. So uh, are you gonna be providing some kind of guidance on what you're looking for in the essay? Or you haven't yeah, got like that far yet? We haven't really got that far yet. You know, we started to get into the weeds on it and I was like, hey man, let's let's see if people wanna do this first before we actually decide how it's gonna be executed. But like I said, that it wouldn't be the first um, racial justice essay contest held in the country. And there are many fine resources out there on good prompts and criteria and, um, and, and ideas to, to throw out to students. So, um, I mean, if, if you'd like us to get more information, we were kind of hoping to get it out there as soon as possible. I know there's also some talk in our committee of uh, planning some kind of Juneteenth event or celebration or unity walk. And certainly that's a day we could use to kick off um, publicity about this event as well. I've, I'm also, I've also talked to some folks at the Lamoille Restorative Center who might be willing to support this in some way as well. Any, any board members got some questions? Mike? I'd like to know the subject matter first before I weigh in on any of this. Um, you you want to hear some of the, the prompts, Mike? I might be able to pull something up real fast for you. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, I can do this in a heartbeat here. Um, so the idea is, okay, the machine is working. Um, um, I think we've got another committee member, Sophia, who might have uh, have some insight. She's got her hand up. Would you like a, an assist, Eric? I mean, the prompt that I have here on our one example is write a 150 to 500 word speech to other young people expressing your commitment to anti-racism and encouraging peers to be anti-racist. That's the only prompt that we have seen in the samples. There's other examples out there, but uh, that, that would be typical of what we're asking, I'd say. And maybe Sophia's perhaps got more than that. I don't know. Gonna... Where is the essay, essay going? Is there a plan for publishing somewhere? Uh, no plans is, at this point in time. This is a wide open thing. You know, like I said, it seems like there's some questions to be answered and, if, you know, and if we get support, then we'll do it. And then we'll plan out, you know, some of the details uh, if it's important to have those details or, or restrictions on this ahead of time, I, you know. I mean, you, you know, you, 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 you you sponsor a committee to have a to, to, to run a little league you know the kids are the kids are going to play baseball right you, you need more than that like if you want to do an essay contest the, the kids are going to write about anti-racism and we'll, we'll we'll judge the essays and we'll award prize money like um sure i'm just curious about interest in all of that uh you know if one kid if one kid writes an essay well, there you go. We know the winner. Uh, you know, just trying to understand. Um, have I you talked to kids about their interest in this? No, I think this is why we reached out for for prize money to incentivize a lot of participation and a lot of conversation. And you know, and it's one of the best things we can do as the racial justice committee is get people talking and learning things, right? And I, and I think to that extent, we've largely been successful. Not that all the conversations have been super positive or productive, but people are definitely talking about it. And I think that is educational on its own. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just tell you, sorry, go Eric. Go ahead, Beth. I was, I was just gonna say, I'll tell you that I am fully supportive of an essay contest. Um, I would also support the board providing some money toward the essay contest. However, this is a big however, I do think that you could very easily get donations. And I know that I personally would happily donate money um, toward activities like this. I think it's a great idea. Uh, and I am sure I'm not the only one who thinks it's a great idea. Um, so I just <laughs> throwing that out there, I know it came up in the uh, village of trustees too. Um, 
we had some discussion work. on that, Beth, and I, and I think we were we were hoping that you know that it would be good to to have the village and the town and, and fund this. Uh, you know, a, a new snowplow is a good idea too, but we don't hold a bake sale for it, right? You know, uh, so you know, I don't think it's a substantial amount of money, you know, that we're asking for, and it would show a commitment to this idea from our town. Eric, is this plan to be a winner take all, or would it be, uh, you know, first, second, third? Type I think of... you're thinking first, second, third. Okay. Yep. Did, did Sophia, are, is Sophia wanting to chime in still? I don't want to jump in ahead of her. I think that she is. Are, are we okay recognizing Sophia? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, my first intention was just to buy Eric some time to look uh, <laughs> for the for the prompts, but, um, I will say I, you know, I feel like um, since our last meeting and since Eric wrote the email to Brian proposing these agenda items, there's been a lot of shakeup for the racial justice committee. Um, and so if we seem, you know, it might seem like we're a little disjointed, but actually the underworkings now that we have this resignation, resignation from Rick, we've kind of gotten a draft agenda in order. We're meeting again on Thursday for a special meeting, like Eric said. Um, so I, I um, I feel like when we first proposed this essay idea, it was just kind of like Eric said, like, let's just see if they'll support it. But now there are, there is um, plans to finalize like the prompt and where the essay will be published and kind of what the prize money will look like and how much will be allotted to the first, second and third. So like we, these are all things that we are planning on knowing. <laughs> it's just, you know, unfortunately things just kind of got shaken up between our last meeting. Um, and just to speak to a point that Margot Warden made at the trustee meeting is um, why we believe, I'm, I'm sure that we can get donations and fundraise for something like this, but you know, seeing the money come from the municipality, from the town, from the village shows that it is a priority for the town and the village, that racial justice and social equity is kind of a, it's on the budget, therefore it is a priority because the budget is a priority list. And so we, we think that um, this, this kind of small amount of, of prize money that we're asking um, shows the commitment that is being made by the town of Johnson. And we're making commitments to having these conversations. And I think fostering these conversations by way of an essay contest in high school kids just furthers that cause. Um, so that's all, thank you. Nat? So I I think that's a, a, a good point about it coming from the municipality, showing that it's a priority for the, for the municipality itself. Um, I'll, I'll also say, um, you know, and Eric mentioned a snowplow. Um, there are really important assets in this community that we've gotten because um, volunteers who really care about the community have gone out and fundraised for them and they haven't asked for any money for um, the select board for the for the beard parcel, which is so critical to us, um, for Journey's End, um, for the bread oven and and uh, the the arboretum, um, these really substantial things that are happening because um, volunteers um, went out and 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 the community cared enough to give money to it. Um, out of their own pockets. So I'm not against uh, this $200. I'm in favor of it, in fact. Um, but I do want to hear from the fund, from, from the Racial Justice Committee that you are um, willing to do fundraising um, and that um, some of the money that you want to spend is going to come from fundraising. It's, it's not fair for us to go to our other volunteers on the Conservation Commission and say, you know, we're not going to fund you. You've got to raise money. Or on the rec committee, um, is where it, I mean, there's really there are a few things in this town that mean uh, to me what the rec committee means to me, and, and how I think that really transforms um, it, just how critical it is. But they do fundraising. Yeah, the town gives some money, but they also do some fundraising. So I've, I've made my point about five times, I think. So I think I can get on there. Yeah. Thank you, Nat. And I would just add on that uh, the town is very, the select board with the responsibility for town's money is, is very generous to a lot of different uh, boards, commissions, committees that we have within the town. 
but by and large, they do a lot of fundraising themselves through grant writing or what have you, donations. And when they need help to fill the gap, that's where we usually step in. But uh, you know, we're not usually seen as the go-to for the initial. But, um, and this is a very a relatively small amount. But yeah. I, I, Eric? To, 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 to talk about what Nat said, like, you know, I, I think there's certainly goodwill on our part to, to do fundraising for, for necessary things. Um, but also, you know, we're kind of wondering about support and we thought this kind of, kind of fairly insignificant amount would, was just a, a symbol of support for what we're trying to do, which would be appreciated. You know, and just for context, you know, the town of Hardwick uh, just also started a, a racial justice group and, and they gave them a budget of $5,000. I don't know what's going on Hardwick that, you know, they thought that was a good idea, but, but it's, it's, there's a precedent, you know, for supporting these things and putting your money where your mouth is when it comes to priorities. But I do appreciate there's, you know, it take it takes everyone's gonna pull the weight. I that I agree. I agree. I just my, I'd, like to, yeah. I'd like to make a correction, uh, Eric uh, Hutchins on uh, Hardwick's town budget. I've got the 2021 to 2022. They call their racial justice committee the equity committee, and they have budgeted twenty five hundred dollars for 2021 2022. Not five thousand. I'm impressed with I've your in, with I've your fact finding, Mike. Uh, I'll have to I, double check my sources on that, but I appreciate you being so on top of this issue. Thank you. It's right, it's right here, and I've got the whole town report uh, on a PDF file, and I can send it to you if you'd like. I'd love. I, to I do. I, I do have another question for you, though. I sure. I read your agenda for your next racial justice uh, a meeting, and it talks about uh, tonight's meeting actually, and it. I guess it implies that you're actually still looking for four hundred dollars. Is that correct? Um, the agenda, the motion we passed at the last meeting was to request two hundred dollars each from the trustees and the select board. Right, but the trustees have not uh, given the two hundred dollars, and your your uh, agenda says, you know, that depending on what happens tonight. Okay, so it appears to me by reading between the lines, if the select board gives you $200 tonight, uh, you're gonna try to come back for the other 200 at another time. Uh, is that, is no. that a safe assumption? No, no, we're just okay. asking for 200 bucks and if we get 200 bucks and we make smaller prizes and, or we fundraise, I don't know, we'll have to decide, it's an up to me. We'll decide at our next meeting how to proceed with half the money we asked for. Okay. But we certainly wouldn't, I don't think we come back to you guys to ask again when we're right here now. Of course, if you did want to kick in the whole 400 here, I, you know, you could certainly, you know, if you wanted to make that, 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 uh, that, you know, amendment, Mike, you'd be, I'd, I'd more than welcome it. Now, okay. I'd like to go back to your subject matter again. Uh, I think if you stuck to the original subject matter that, that uh, you had talked about at your at the beginning of your uh, discussion, uh, there are other subject matters that are, uh, a bone of contention in many school districts throughout the country. Uh, they are uh, kind of uh, at loggerheads on particular issues like white fragility, critical race theory, and the 1619 project. I guess if I was assured uh, that these things would not be uh, discussed as part of this uh, essay contest, I might be willing to put my uh, uh, weight behind support of this. But if I cannot be assured uh, that these subjects will not be essayed on, I think I'll hold back uh, support. So, uh, you know, with regards to all those things you mentioned, white fragility, uh, critical race theory, and the 1619 project, which of course, as a social studies educator, I'm super familiar with the national debate on these things. Um, but I can tell you, if we did an essay contest, the, the content of the essays would be up to the individual students to write. Um, and I imagine that they would be wide ranging and delve into all things and probably touch on full perspectives on what anti-racism means. We, we wouldn't be in there coaching kids what to write. Um, okay. So uh, I, I don't think you need to, to think too hard about that. Um, and, you know, and I'd say this is another instance of what I was talking about earlier. 
too many people, there, there's a lot of people trying to divide this country up over this issue. And though, you know, there's college professors that don't, you know, all those things you talked about are the things that are being used as lightning rods to divide us. And they don't really, I mean, talk about how they, each of those academic level things impacts regular people in our community. And I'm happy to talk to you about it because because I just, it's a great example of, of how each of us, and I can think of examples coming from the other side too, where people are being misled and disinformed. And if you just talk to your neighbors, you talk to the BIPOC community, you talk to people who live here and you talk to experts, like I would say, Zizana Davis and Governor Scott, and you know, humbly, the people you've appointed this committee who've spent a lot of time talking and researching this, you know, I, th I think face-to-face, -face, small town discussions about this are, gonna, are what's gonna change things. And I'd, I'd urge us all to like tune out a lot of that stuff you're talking about, because it doesn't, it's just not relevant to what we're talking about. Okay. I, I understand, Eric, but I, I just want to make sure that, you know, this isn't part of it. Uh, like you said in the very beginning, uh, w what your thoughts were on it. And so if you if you the committee sticks with just that, you know, I have no problem with that at all. Yeah, I don't I don't think that there would be any prompt that would directly mention critical race theory, uh, the 1619 project or white fragility. Um, however, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if we managed to get a decent prize fund and we got dozens of responses that there would be high school level students that wouldn't incorporate some aspect of some of those things, but I, I don't know, but certainly it wouldn't be on, it wouldn't be on the label, Mike. Okay. okay. If yeah. we can bring it back around a little bit. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions from the board thrown out, um, Maybe most of them have been answered by Eric, but some of them may not have been because of the, uh, the committee right now. What's the board's pleasure? Is it prepared to authorize some amount of money with any conditions or, or do you want more uh, clarification on what the request is? I make a motion to provide a $200 um dollar amount to the racial justice committee to allow for um the essay contest okay we have a motion do we have a second i um i'd like to make a second with perhaps a friendly amendment to um make it eligible to johnson residents is that yep. considered friendly good. okay we have a friendly amendment so that would be a motion authorizing up to $200 for the essay, racial justice essay for Johnson residents. We had a second, any other discussion? Mike? So you're saying that is for only Johnson high school students? That? Uh, I didn't say high school students, but uh, Johnson resident. Just residents in general. It's up to the committee to to make it more specific from there, but uh, yeah. Any other discussion? Okay. I've got a member of the public. Okay, if there's no further board members, then we'll open it up to the public. Okay, Kyle, go ahead. Yes, hi, thanks. Um, I guess I'm thinking that we have a union high school. I'm not really sure how how that would work for just Johnson residents if it's going to a, a union school district. Good problem for the racial justice to figure out. Mike? Actually, I've got to agree with Kyle. Well, that's the motion that's been presented. You can propose an amendment, Mike. Well, yeah, I don't know. I maybe it'd be cleaner if this one got vote on the one you've got, and we can go back or something. Well, I'd be happy to to leave that to the discretion of the racial justice committee. It would be my preference that it goes to uh, to a Johnson resident, as being Johnson tax money. Um, 
and I would be happy to leave it to your to your better judgment as a committee. Yes, I, I don't think that's a proper motion myself. No, the motion on the floor is that it is directed to Johnson residents. So yeah, I would I understand suggest either withdrawal of the motion and and submitting a new one or we vote down this motion. How strongly do you feel about that, Nat? I don't. You don't feel strongly? I don't feel strongly either way. Okay. I, I mean, I so, told you what my preference is, but I don't, you know, I don't think we need to tie ourselves up for a long time about it. Brian? What if we amend to a um, Lamoille County student, which doesn't specify school? Okay, we'll do that. Well, I think Eric's going to have a similar comment here, but this is not that unusual for a school district to have something that's not eligible for all students. You know, it's okay for us to have something that's just for Johnson residents and the school isn't running it, our racial justice committee. So it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the union school. Uh, it's quite all right for us to restrict it to Johnson residents. I didn't say union school. <laughs> I know. Clear. Yeah. Let's uh, yeah. let Eric speak first, and then we'll come back to the motion. I think these are all good points. And I, I like Nat said here, like, you know, we can take these sentiments into account. Also, leaving it flexible might allow us more fundraising options. You know, I don't know if the restorative center wants to help us out if it's just for Johnson kid rather than Lamoille kid. So I think we understand the sentiment if it's Johnson town money and we, we'd like to make this happen for, you know, Johnson recipients, but that might not work. So I, I'd, I'd request maximum flexibility for the committee and trust our judgment to do the right thing. Okay, as there was negotiation going on between the motioner and the seconder, I'm not really sure that this is a really very clean motion. I'm sure Donna's probably scratching her head. No, no, the motion's been made. I'm trying to talk Beth into another friendly amendment. <laughs> So what's, your, okay, what's your amendment? What is, okay, restate what you would like it to be. We'll take Please. away the residency requirement and just state, leave it to the better judgment of, of the Racial Justice Committee. It's certainly my preference that it goes to a Johnson resident. But yeah, if there are fundraising opportunities uh, with Restorative Center or other towns, you have the flexibility. So my, my request is that we remove the residency requirement from the motion. Is that considered a friendly amendment? Yes. Okay. And the understanding from the discussion is the preference would be a Johnson resident, but the motion does not require it now. Any further discussion? I did have another member of the public. All right, Kim or Scott. Yeah, um, I was just thinking that it would be nice to involve more people and to have it uh, as a I mean I, I wasn't going to comment because Eric just said leave it to us but um, and possibly just have the prizes go but to still open the contest up for people to write in but it's kind of screwy so anyway I, I will I will uh, leave it to them thank you Kim okay any further discussion from the public comments from the public i don't see anything is the board ready to vote it appears to be all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Those opposed the ayes have it congratulations eric do we have peter on i've got a telephone but i don't see peter's logged in uh, so I'm going to ask the person on the telephone to unmute, and we'll see if that's Peter. Hi, this is Peter. Excellent. Peter. Welcome, Peter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I didn't know what, when that was going to end, so uh, just waiting here. <laughs> yeah. Thank uh, you for together. understanding that we had a little bit of a we shifted the schedule around a little bit with a couple things ending early. So thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem. It's been a day like that. I, I can't get my video or my Zoom to work, so I'm calling. Great. So um, 
I guess, do you want a little info? I'll give you a little introduction on this. this is, calling in is uh, Peter Danforth of the Lamoille County Conservation. Um, he has been assisting us in cooperation with the village, uh, working on the uh, Johnson Stormwater Master Plan. And as part of that, he has, uh, with some additional consultation, we've developed three sites uh, as I think it's 30% complete engineering. Um, yeah. So we've got three sites that have partially completed engineering, identifying these as kind of high priority project areas. Uh, so by doing some of the engineering on them, it makes them a little bit more affordable uh, for either the, the town, the village, or the property owner to undertake the improvements in the future. And uh, so Peter's here, here to present that. So in your packet, you've got the complete stormwater master plan, but our focus is going to be on the three sites. Uh, that's uh, site one is uh, the town library. Site two is the college apart apartments at NVU. And site three is the Sterling Market. Right. That's and correct. Peter, if you want to take it away. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, yes, so I'm Peter Danforth with Lamoille County Conservation District. Uh, and, and I worked, uh, we hired Watershed Consulting to do most of the engineering on this, but um, we worked with the town, the village, um, landowners, uh, the planning commission as well um, to look at different sites that would benefit for stormwater mitigation. Um, and so the three sites, we actually came up with about 30 plus sites that we identified during the whole study, but we narrowed it down to about 10 priority sites. And then three of which uh, were brought to what we call 30% design, which is a basic design concept um, that is preliminary to any kind of um, actual design implementation. And so as uh, Brian said, uh, the Johnson Library off of Railroad Street would um, help collect a lot of the um, acreage of stormwater that comes from that area. And we would attempt to um, capture it before it enters the Lamoille River and subsequently the um, Lake Champlain Basin, um, which is really why the money is coming to us because they want to mitigate uh, phosphorus and sediment loading. And so with the uh, Johnson Library, essentially what we'd like to do, um, kind of retrofit what you already have as far as a stormwater pipe and then lead it to um, an actual, what we call a subsurface um, infiltration chamber, um, which we've done in Morrisville. Um, so we've, got, we've already done a stormwater master plan for Morrisville as well as Hyde Park. And we've implemented a few of those or we're in the process of doing so. And so I don't know how deeply you want me to get into this. I know it's a long night, <laughs> but you know, essentially that project at Johnson Library, as well as the Sterling Market would be a similar kind of idea where we'd actually take um, the runoff from the greater area and try to narrow it down into a system that's underground, you don't see it, but it will treat that wastewater before it enters into, I should say gray water, I'm sorry, um, before it enters into the Lamoille River and treat it before it loads it with the phosphorus and sediment. Uh, the Johnson MBU project is slightly different, same idea, but up on campus where the college apartments are, um, you know, it's a lot of rock, shale, it's hard to actually have every, anything infiltrate. So we had to lead the water down a conveyance system to a drainage basin where it would be treated. Um, and then we'd have a overflow as well. So um, basically, I just wanted to announce that, you know, the stormwater master plan is complete. It sounds like everyone has a copy of it. We do have a copy of it on our website, but if, um, you know, you need to have extra 
appendices or um, descriptions of what we did, I can provide that. Um, so I'm really just here to, you know, I'm open up to questions um, regarding that. Okay. Um, any board members have questions first? Um, I just have questions about um, how to kick the project off and where the funding comes from, those types of things. Yeah, that's a great, great question. So basically, um, what I do is, as part of the district, we wait for the cycle of funding to come through. And right now, we um, are about to hear an announcement for projects like this. And it's separated into projects for natural resource concerns, like riparian areas or tree planting, or it's um, going towards storm water uh, specific to this. And then there's also a block grant that's dedicated towards schools. Although in this situation, that would be high schools. So the college would you know, fall under the stormwater grant. So um, basically I'm on the phone waiting to hear this funding come through. Uh, it's supposed to come through and then I submit um, a basic uh, design implementation grant proposal. And from that, um, they provide us money to do so. And it's coming via, coming through the DEC through our mother agency, the Vermont Association of Conservation Districts who received the grant. And so they're doling out the money uh, amongst the different districts within the state. There are about 14 districts. Um, and I think there's about 2.5 million, I think, in that. And so we're gonna attempt to at least do one or two of these projects this year and then uh, move on you know, as the years go on. And of course, the model for this will change over the years as well, as the DEC um, next year is going to sort of delegate to regional planning commissions to hold on to that block funding money and delegate it to organizations such as uh, the districts. So essentially, within this month, I'm hoping before June, I'm going to hear that we can move forward. Uh, right now, uh, the three designs, I'm going to see which one of them is most likely to get funded. Um, I know that the MBU one has a lot of backup from the people at the college, including the students and professors there who want to be involved in it. Um, and I know that the, you know, the library project, as well as the Sterling Market project is ready to go. It's just a matter of figuring out which one can happen this, this year or the following year, um, and then, you know, step by step. Okay. Uh, of course, NVU, Sterling Market, there really wouldn't be a lot of a town role in, in those areas. The, the library area, uh, I'm guessing you've had discussions with the village trustees who are, uh, responsible for stormwater runoff in the railroad street area. Uh, so it would have to be a partnership between us to do that work with the library area. Yes, yeah. So yeah, I, I talked to the village last week in the same manner I am tonight and uh, they're all aboard. Um, so it's just a matter of if we decide to move forward, um, making sure that, you know, the private landowners the town and the village and the district are all working together to make it a complete project. Make sure we're going through all the permitting processes. Uh, we have to go through a design phase, 100% design phase, and then implement. And time scale wise, you know, I always want to say, hell yeah, it can happen this fall, but you know, um, you know, it could be a 22 project. It all depends on how quickly things move forward. And I believe you had an estimate of a hundred thousand for that project. Uh, let me check. I think it was around ninety-nine thousand or something. Um, how much of that would be funded by? Uh, so that would essentially be completely funded by the block grants. Um, but with the block grants, you know, although now they don't re require match, uh, we usually work with the town or village or the landowner to you know, 
find out if there's anything they can offer as far as resources in the match. Um, you know, uh, the resources are being human resources. In other words, time spent coordinating this, uh, but the actual implementation, the equipment um, that's being installed, that's all going to go through the grant. Okay. Um, I will open it up to Jessica from the library if there's no further board members with questions or comments. Nat? I, I do have a quick question. Um, the, we have uh, some, there are some drainage problems there on Railroad Street um, that, um, you know, just in a heavy rain, a lot of the water just sits on the street. So would this project actually help the, the water drain into the river in those sorts of events? Yeah, that would be the intent as well is to, you know, bring it to this point um, and make it more easily go into this um, system. And it would actually provide potential uh, flood resistance specifically for the library, you know, as far as dealing with overflow. Um, but the main intent was definitely for clean water. But, you know, when we went through the analysis of it, it seemed like it would provide some flood mitigation, at least for that structure. Okay, I was thinking more about structures, you know, other structures in the area, but you answered the question. Thank you. Any other, Mike? I, I think it's great that uh, we have a chance to, to try to whittle this down a little bit, and it appears as if it's going to be 100% funded, but you know, most of us realize that the phosphorus problem uh, is not the municipal problem. Uh, agriculture puts 40%, uh, forest 40%, and municipalities like 12 to 15%. So no matter what we do, we're never gonna make the state mandate. So, you know, we're, we're just uh, spinning our wheels, but at least it gives us a chance to, to, do, to do something uh, to try to mitigate this problem. Oh, you're totally correct. Um, you know, and we also work with uh, surrounding agricultural interests, you know, and other private landowners um, to do work in that area. So this is just kind of like part and parcel of many other projects that are ongoing. And, you know, this particular design came up, um, you know, as, in, as important because of the amount of acreage it would um, treat. But I hear what you're saying, you know, and we work with a lot of farms on the same level through different funding sources. So it's kind of like, you know, it's just another part of what we're doing. Thank you. Okay, yep. um, if there's no further board members with questions, let's open it up to Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Uh, thank you. Um, this sounds like a great project. Um, do you have an, any idea, and I realize it's a, a ways out yet, um, with implementation, how it might impact the, the operations of the library? Would we need to like close down for a period of time? Um, that sort of thing, just trying to plan ahead and put this on our, um, our scope of work that could be. That is a really good question. Um, it might create kind of a small hiccup, but most of the work done from Railroad Street to the chambers are going to be, you know, with the pipe system going to it, and the, the large majority of the project is going to be taking place behind the library. And I think you can still manage to keep things open. However, um, you know, caveat: I'm going to say that because I'm not an engineer. Um, you know, once we get down to the nitty gritty, you know, we'll be talking to you in the village about how to coordinate it and make sure that it's, you know, going to be limited as far as, you know, how to, how it interrupts any kind of service, but it's not, it, it will definitely, but to what degree, I'm not sure. Uh, we're hoping this is no more than a week in its implementation. We did a similar project in Morrisville and, and it basically took about a week to do. Um, so there might be a week where things are you know, we might have to reroute things for people. Uh, but again, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not, you know, speak clearly to that. Okay, thank you. 
Yep. Okay, Brian, is there any for one else from the public with comments? Uh, I'll give them a second, but I'm not seeing any hands from the public. Okay, is there any further board members comments? Uh, we are actually right on schedule. Really appreciate the report. Um, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter, for coming in tonight. Hey, thank you. Have Thanks. a good evening. You too. Okay. Uh, we did the first one. The second one, letter of support from Lamoille Family Center and Jenna's Promise. Yes. Uh, give me one second. Switch gears here. Uh, we've received a request for a letter of support uh, for a cooperative project between the Loyal Family Center, Dennis Promise, and the Loyal Health Partners. Uh, they are attempting to purchase and renovate a building in Johnson um, with the idea being that they will, uh, that this will be part of a private physician and uh, other healthcare providers being able to use this as an integrated human services and healthcare hub. Um, still in early stages, but a letter of support from the town will help them with their uh, fundraising uh, grant writing efforts. What's well, the board's pleasure? And I believe Floyd Neese sent along a sample letter that we would just need to put our letterhead on. Yep, and the sample letter is in your uh, yep. your packet for what they're seeking from the town. So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, I'm curious what services will be provided. Is this something where uh, I assume it aligns with Jenna's promise? And is it something where um, there would be a clinic where there's drug distribution, like um, an uh, opioid. Um, sorry, I'm not going to think of the right word, but like a suboxone or um, methadone or something like that. Is that the, the addiction practice? treatment kind of drugs? I would imagine that that's probably true. Um, but we don't have that level of detail yet. Uh, Jenna's Promise is involved. Jenna's Promise has uh, an interest in uh, kind of both more directed addiction treatment, but they also are uh, have so far been attempting to partner with uh, a wider access, better access to wider healthcare. Um, so we don't have specifics about this project is going to be, well, we, we, we know from, from the letter and what they're saying that they want this to be a wider uh, healthcare hub, that they want this to provide more than just addiction treatment services. But I would imagine that it would have an addiction component to it. And, and this isn't the first time this discussion's happened. Uh, they were in talks with... Uh... Copley trying to get here in yep. Johnson, sort of like a little satellite uh, facility. And I, they were looking at the school at the time, the elementary school. So this is something that's been going ongoing for a, a few years now. Yeah. I'm aware. Of, yeah. Thanks, Eric. I'm aware of the element, elementary okay. discussion. Yeah. It's just a new partner now. It's the, uh, uh, the Lamoille Family Center is is involved as well. Is there any further board member comments? If not, we can open it up to the public. Mike, did I see your hand? Yeah, I was just curious of why nobody was here tonight to speak to this. I think that this is pretty early days. Um, and we got this a little late in the process. So I don't think that they were able to make arrangements for somebody to be here. Okay, well, it would be nice to, if somebody was here from one of these three uh, groups to kind of speak to it. Well, I think uh, the family center is the one driving it. Um, that's Floyd Neese is one that sent me the, uh, the email, so. Okay. Um, All right. 
if there's any further, no further comments, we'll open it up. Uh, Kyle. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, I agree. I'm, I'm surprised this, you know, someone's not here to speak to it because I had some more specific questions to ask too. Um, the first being, um, what building are we talking about? That is something that they're not able to release at this time as it would put them in an unfair advantage right now with some negotiations that are happening. Okay, so you're being asked to sign off on something that you don't even know which, which what building it is or, or maybe you, you all do and the public doesn't? No, I, I don't believe that the board does. And neither, for the record, neither do I. Okay. Um, so my second question was um, curious. So it sounds like this is at, le at least two. So Jenna's promise in the family center. Did you mention one more, Brian? Healthy Lamoille <laughs> Valley, which is part of the family center now? Uh, no, it's not Healthy Lamoille oh. Valley specifically. It's uh, Lamoille Health Partners. Okay, okay. And so Lamoille Health Partners is a uh, federally qualified healthcare provider. Okay. So it sounds like there's at least three organizations in, involved in, in trying to come together in this one building to provide these services. So do you know if is one of these organizations buying the building and the others are gonna rent from them or who, who's gonna actually buy the property? Do you know? Does it say in your packet? I uh, know it does not get no. into that level of detail. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. I Again, we got this a little bit late in the process. I think that they, you know, that, that we don't have a ton of details about this, but they are asking if, if we support it in concept, the letter of support that they provided, we can modify it. Uh, but it is, you know, it, it does not bind us to anything too strict and we can soften it uh, if we want of, you know, that we are support, we can make something to the effect of we are supportive of a, uh, you know, a healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I, I was just curious about, about just more of those, those specifics. Um, Cause it is, it's a, a huge chunk of money. So. Um, I'm curious. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Beth? Um, I just, I was asking the question, the letter we have, because the letter, the information we have, I mean, it sounds like really great services. So I just want to be really clear. They're talking about therapeutic child care centers um, from children from in, infancy to preschool aged which I think is very desperately needed in Johnson, I'll just say. Um, and then it talks about other services for parents and parent education and consultation with other providers. Like that's all really good stuff. The thing and mental health programs, like, you know, we need mental health for sure. And I just wanna make that really clear because I didn't see anything about um, other services, which is why I asked the question. Um, and I, I agree with Mike. I would like to hear from actually uh, Floyd. I was going to say now Floyd's on. ears must have oh, been perfect. burning because I, I see him uh, joining us. Welcome, Floyd. <laughs> oh, you're still thank on you mute. for joining us, Floyd. Yeah, I got a text. <laughs> okay, I sh I should be. They said I should be here, so I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for coming. Okay. It was Who great was it? to be back in Johnson, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Good, good to see you, Floyd. Good to see you. I think Mike had the first questions. No, I didn't really have any questions. I just uh, mentioned uh, I thought somebody should be here to answer any questions anybody had. You see, your wishes, his command. Voila. <laughs> just like when he was in the legislature, right? Every time I called, <laughs> I, I jumped. Uh, so there were a few questions that were brought up. Uh, does anybody want to address those questions directly to Floyd right now? I'll ask. 
I'll ask my Go questions. Ahead, if you yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so my questions are, are other services going, so I appreciate the letter and I think you heard the last of what I said, the, the services mentioned in the letter are, yeah. you know, greatly needed and that's awesome. Um, are there going, are, is the intent for other services to be provided like other um, drug therapy services, for example, like um, clinics? It's right, right now. Is, Mike's house. <laughs> Mike's right now it's right now it's pretty confidential but there are negotiations with a uh, certified addiction specialist underway right now um and that's i think i may have already said too much but the fact is that what the family center does through its children's integrated services program is does a bunch of screens okay they screen families for everything from substance misuse to domestic violence to um to fragile housing to, um, uh, you know, and their child gets looked at for any kind of learning disabilities or, you know, any struggles they're having with developmental tasks. So it's a, it's a comprehensive wraparound. We don't, it won't necessarily be provided in that building, um, but services, I mean, the intent of the services through the family center is to get families connected with whoever they need to be connected to. Okay, and the, but the primary intent of this building is for the child services specifically. Well, it's for uh, family. It's for uh, um, it's not Cheslove anymore. It's Lamoille Health Partners. I got to get that right. Lamoille Health Partners um, intends to set up a telehealth hub and a primary care office in that in some space upstairs, um, and it could be separated pretty easily, I think, from the child care so that we don't have any uh, challenges that way. The, um, um, the other thing, there's some negotiations underway with other providers um, and I don't wanna out them, um, but, I, but this could be, I think this is, this is a win, win, win. Um, and, um, and it's nice to be able to do something for Johnson again. Thank you, Floyd. Thanks, Floyd. Is there any, well, is there any further board members questions or do, is there anyone from the public that has any questions? And we did have them. Okay, I see at least Kyle's come up. Okay, Kyle, go ahead. Great, thank you. Hi, Floyd. Hey, how are you? Good, good. I'm sorry, my camera's off. Um, so I had a few questions before you came on. Um, one, I just was curious what building we're talking about because we're uh, they just, People kept saying the building, but I wasn't sure what building you're you're um, hoping this will happen in. Um, because there is a federal bond that um, that shadows that's a, a shadow on the on the title, we can't talk about that. It seems like if you you know Kyle, you live in Johnson, just think about it a little bit. Like what buildings might be coming up for sale in Johnson over the course of the next six months. Uh, okay, <laughs> I will put my thinking cap on about that. <laughs> okay. um, uh, I guess my, what was my second question um, was, what did I ask Brian? Um, so what building? Who was purchasing? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So thank you. So since there's three, it sounds like there's three community partners going um, in on this, I was curious who was actually buying the building. When the money comes in, that will be decided. So that's it's really it's really who is best equipped to handle the, um, you know, it's an ongoing thing. Someone needs to be a landlord, right? And so it's it's a matter of whether the family center, uh, Lamoille Health Partners, or uh, Jenna's Promise has you know the heft to be able to pull off that. So it, it really is, it really has not been decided. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then I guess uh, an, another question that just popped into my head is, um, didn't the Family Center try to do a daycare at one point or a, a, some kind of childcare center in the past? Well, we had a childcare center. We had an infant and toddler program housed at the Family Center. Uh -huh. for 
year, for many years, actually. It was a small one for eight kids. Um, and with coronavirus, there was no way, the space is so minimal that there was no way to make it um, uh, COVID proof. So we closed it mm -hmm. uh, with the intention of finding a way to open another center. And this, this would be a center for, um, we'd be emphasizing infants and toddlers because that's where the market, that's what's in demand right now. But um, our, our vision is that it would it'd be about 40 kids and it would be, there'd be an infant and toddler room, a, uh, I forget the, I forget the age ranges, but there'd be four different rooms um, going all the way up to preschool. Okay. Wow. So, it, and, but it would be open, obviously, to anyone far and wide that that needed a needed care. Yes, and um, it would be a resource for other daycare provide child care providers, um, mm -hmm. because what therapeutic child care is meant to do is to work with. So, if there are a number of two year olds and three year olds getting kicked out of child care these days, and they bite or they you know they're acting out. Um, and what, what therapeutic child care does is works with the family and with the child and with the child care provider. So um, just as at Laraway, when I was there, we wouldn't take any kid that the school wouldn't take back when we thought they were ready. Um, that's, the same, that's the same way we're going to treat this, is that we're going we're gonna to accept referrals from other child care providers, but we're going to get um, we're going to help the family see how to deal with those behaviors. We're going to help um, the child care provider figure out how to deal with those behaviors and get that child back to their original child care provider if we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, and then, so this is all going to be facilitated through the Lamoille, through the family center. The child care is, yes. The child care. Okay. Okay. Great. That gives me a clearer, clearer picture on that piece. Um, it would, Kyle, it would also allow us, if it would allow a childcare provider who's having trouble with a kid, mm -hmm. call us up and to say, we're having some challenges. Could you come take a look um, and, uh, and help us out? And we will show up and we will help them out. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I hope Thank you. it's successful. <laughs> Good okay. questions. We're running a little bit over, but uh, I see another hand up. All right. That was you let me in. Yeah, we let you in. <laughs> Having a little trouble unmuting. We can't hear right. you. Okay. I got it. You can, there it can goes. Yep. All right. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say much. Um, I, it sounds like it's a, a lot of details left to work out, but it absolutely sounds like something that the board should be supporting in concept. Thank you, Duncan. Okay, we have the motion on the floor. We have a second. Is there any other discussion? Is the board prepared to vote? Okay, supporting with a supporting letter. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Floyd, and good seeing you again. Yes, Thanks, good Floyd. seeing you guys too. It's good really seeing you, Floyd. Take care of yourself. I, I got to tell you, I tell people that I live in Chittenden County now, but I get to drive back into Vermont every day for work. <laughs> <laughs> See, you. See you later. Yeah. yeah Thanks for joining care. us on uh, kind of abrupt, short notice. Well, you caught me in a t-shirt, not a tie, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's quite all right. <laughs> okay. The uh, procurement policy update. All right, so uh, talk to Public Works and the library, and we've got a couple comments on the procurement policy. For Public Works, um, I think that it's, we don't really need a lot of updates uh, to make it work for Public Works. Um, Hugh has some concerns. Uh, you know, he's concerned that, um, Excuse me. He's concerned that, that the limit is going to be a little bit tough for him to uh, meet, that there, there's a lot of purchases that are going to rise to that level of the minor purchase where he should have uh, select board approval for it. Uh, when we talked about it, we, I believe 
that um, what we have set for the emergency purchases as allowed here um, in, in what was passed that uh, we can make purchases if they are, uh, let's see, emergency expenditures may include immediate repair or maintenance of town property, vehicles, or equipment. If the delay in such repair or maintenance would endanger persons or property or result in substantial impairment of the delivery of important town services. So if a truck breaks down, he doesn't have to wait for approval at the next meeting. He can make it as an emergency purchase and inform us of it afterwards. Most of our, uh, like a truck breakdown, most of those suppliers we would already have an account with right so yes. we wouldn't he wouldn't have to go through this procurement would be more like with the uh, uh, a town credit card policy. it would be a little bit more like that but it, it would also it would be he would he would be expending town funds so he should follow the best practices but as long as we're all on the same page of we understand that he might make pretty liberal use of this emergency purchases but it's not because he's disorganized, it's because there are a number of things that can't be predicted. That if it's not time sensitive, he will tell us about it in advance. But if it is time sensitive, he does have permission to make those purchases. I guess my impression always was if it was a uh, pre-approved supply supplier that uh, Hugh or yourself could you know, if you needed a whole set of greater tires and they're going to run well over a thousand dollars, you can just go purchase them. You don't need to come to the select board, but if it's something that's uh, unique, that a thousand dollar limit, um, you know, going somewhere outside of our normal purchasing is where I think there should be approval still, but I, maybe that's a wrong impression, but that's the impression I had. If it's under a thousand dollars, the, the um, it, it's less about where it comes from and more about just the strict dollar amount. So if it's under a thousand dollars, it doesn't really matter who it comes from. That's a minor or that's an incidental purchase. If it's more than a thousand but less than two thousand, that's a minor purchase. Where we're we're not necessarily going to take it up to bid. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. It depends on on the nature of it but the board should be informed first before making those purchases. But there's gonna be a decent amount of time, whether it's when we talk about, you know, truck repairs in particular, we don't know when those are gonna come up and they're time sensitive. So he has gotta be able to act on them. My feeling is that this policy allows that he has permission to uh, make purchases that are time sensitive uh, if they fulfill needs. Okay. I, I guess I always thought he did have that authority. Like if he had to put a new transmission in a, one of those tandems, you're talking five, $10,000 or yeah. what have you. Uh, he had the authority to do that. That, that was our prior practice. And again, I think that this mostly just codifies what our practice was. Okay. So I think that this, that is part of this, but I kind of wanted to go on record and, and make that, make sure that everybody understood that. Um, and there actually is a thing that we can clear about, clear up about that. Emergency purchases, it does say that the select board may award contracts and make purchases. It should read, that the select board or its designated agents has that authority. Yeah. So I'm going to propose that we make that change that it's select board or designated agents. Uh, there's one other typo that I want to fix. Uh, as long as I'm talking about typos. Uh, at one point, we refer to minor purchases as uh, starting at $1,000. At another point, we refer to them as starting at $500. Uh, 
we had agreed in the meeting that they should be a thousand dollars. So I want to fix that in all references throughout the document that it's con to make it consistent. You know, that it's minor purchases are between one thousand and two thousand dollars. Okay. And that's just an inconsistency in two different spots. It's supposed to be a thousand. Uh, that's everything I've got here. Uh, and that takes care of public works. The library had a, a couple of questions and a couple of comments about this. The library is interested if we might set a particular amount, um, like say less than, uh, Jessica can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe they had suggested less than $2,000 to be approved by the library trustees, provided again that it's within the, um, it's within the library's budget up to that amount. So would they be considered a agent of the select board in that capacity? The library uh, director is, is named as an agent. Okay. Uh, they also had that they would like uh, the library, the head librarian to be added as an agent. And I think it was the youth services library as a uh, youth services librarian as, a, as an agent also. Okay. Well, we don't have the, whatever you said first, you said something that we already had as something for library as an agent, but we don't, you have a note to add head librarian and youth services. Is there something else that's missing? There is, thank you, Beth. Uh, yes, that there's a note that says that we should have added it and we should have. So uh, we can make that fix. What uh, is we're it? fixing the other typo. And what is it, it would be the head librarian and the library and the youth services librarian. Okay, those are the two, okay. Those are the two that they're requesting. Uh, the select board, you know, might consider just the head librarian. Uh, if you're not comfortable with giving it to both uh, members of the library, but uh, that is the, re the request from the library trustees. Mm -hmm. And I believe it just is ready to speak to why that request is being made. Okay. If there's no further board member comments, Bring are we going to keep going through the other proposals or are we going to talk to Jess and then go back? Is there more proposal changes? Uh, let's go ahead and bring Jess in for this one. And I, it'll give me a second to review uh, the library request. So thank you. We, brought, we put the reason we put the youth services librarian in there as well is because of the summer reading program. There's often, you know, all of those supplies are purchased at once and it makes sense for that individual in that position to do that purchasing versus having to have Jean go and order all of those supplies or go to, you know, a, you know, a place to pick them up. So that's why we included the youth services librarian in that line as a purchasing agent. So. And then the other request was that we might be able to approve the minor purchases category, um, just to see a step if it was already in our budget, so. Through the library trustees, right? Through the library trustees, yeah. Okay. I would support that personally. Yep. Any board members questions? If not, uh, why don't we go through the whole thing first? Because I know there's at least one more hand up. And then we'll circle around board members' questions and then open up the public. And hopefully, we'll have a motion to adopt. OK, Duncan. Um, yes, I have not seen the procurement policy, but uh, given the comments with regard to the library, I'm wondering how this might affect entities like the Historical Society who have a budget within the Selectman's 
greater budget. Do we have an answer for that? They do have an independent budget. They make, they send invoices to us, but the invoices are signed off and approved uh, by myself or by Rosemary. So the, those invoices are going through and being processed by a purchasing agent, somebody who's already a designated purchasing agent. So those limits would, for example, we at our most recent board meeting, I believe we approved up to, uh, I want, Lois is there, I think we approved up to $6,000 for um, uh, uh, conservation of historic items through the conserv conservator that the town uses, that would be something the board could vote on and submit without having to get select board approval, hopefully. Over $6,000, that would be a major purchase. Uh, so that would have to go before the select board first. Um, that would be You know, a relatively you know, I think that would be a relatively routine, but I don't think that that would qualify for an exemption. Um, well, I guess it's a professional service. Yeah, so I, I guess we'd get into some of the specifics, but it might, it may or may not qualify for an exemption. Thank. Okay. Uh, I guess I'd like to, uh, as a member of the Historical Society Board, before the town adopts this policy, I think it would be nice for us to see it if we're going to be affected by it and have a chance to comment on it. We are about 10 minutes over schedule right now, and I got a feeling this procurement policy is going to have a lot more discussion. Yeah. So I think I, have legs. I think we need to uh, pass over it now and get more information, figure out how we're going to work it. Can I make a suggestion, Eric? Yeah, go ahead. Um, can we send the procurement policy draft to Skate Park Committee, Historical Society, Tuesday Night Live, and Rec Committee? Those are the big committees within our budget that have multiple line items that are over $1,000 per line item and get their feedback and then we can do it again. Yeah, I think that's probably a good suggestion. Any of those groups that spend significant amounts of money regularly should probably uh, be briefed in on this. All right. I mean, we don't wanna tie everyone's hands we do want to have a procurement policy in place. Okay, so we'll come back to that at a future date. All right, thank you. Next up is the- MOU uh, with the library. Discussion adoption of the MOU with the library. The MOU with the library, you've seen the most recent draft. Um, that the library has submitted to us. And I received a suggestion on changing the purchasing agreement um, and where it refers to expenditures in our MOU to change that language to, you know, as described in the procurement policy, um, just to make it so again, we don't have kind of reduce our ability to make documents that contradict each other. Each other. Um, but other than that, it is largely what we had submitted to the library trustees. 
Okay. Did we get this sent to us? Because I don't. It's right either. behind the. It's right behind the um, procurement. Oh, okay. It's in the package. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, I missed that. I think that Brian. I mean, on this one. So I'm the one who made the ref that we should have the reference the procurement policy, and if we're going to reference a policy, then we need to adopt them together. So I unfortunately would just ask that maybe we could push this one out too. I think that's pretty fair. I think the library would understand. Um, you know, we can kind of agree to this in principle, but we're not going to finish and adopt it until uh, we, we've got its kind of partner or contingent policy completed also. that the pleasure of the board? Yes. Eben? Yes. Okay, Nat? Yes. Okay, then uh, we'll come back to that as well. Future date. All right, next up, we've got a letter from the Historical Society. So, uh, of note, uh, kind of the first most important thing, or I believe that the most important thing out of the note from the Historical Society is uh, the roof leak. We, we will be securing a contractor to make repairs there. I don't have a cost estimate yet, uh, but just inside the entrance, uh, a little kind of in the door and to the right, uh, there are some, there's some water damage. Uh, we had this problem last year uh, during the uh, snow melt. We had an ice dam that had built up uh, that we were able to break up. Uh, so it caused us a little bit of damage last spring and then it happened again. Uh, evidently this spring uh, wasn't, we didn't see it happening because you know the, the building is seen a lot less use currently. There's a lot fewer people inside, but there, the roof leak is uh, definitely recurring and needs maintenance. Mike? That was that area where the corner of the building kind of got all rotted out, right? Uh, it's not really the corner of the building. It's more... Uh, that, that was addressed when we fixed the uh, porch area. There, there was a, a major... Was there a major leak there, Duncan? There may have been a major leak there, but uh, this is a different... Yeah, okay. Why don't we loop in Duncan... Yeah, I'm asking Duncan to unmute now. Yeah, Mike, the area that uh, is is the subject of the leak um, is an area that Jill Lahulia actually uh, changed the roof pitch and added a new roof. Um, we suspect that at least the possibility is there is a vent pipe that goes up through that roof, um, and it's it's at least possible that that um, boot around the vent pipe, um, you know, could potentially be the source of the leak. Okay. So this, this could turn into be kind of a minor fix, not a, not a major repair. Anybody's guess at this point. Right, but you're not calling for a whole new roof. I guess no. that's my point. <laughs> no. no the, the anticipation is that it will be a patch, not a new roof good and we have a contractor lined up you said i've reached out to a couple of folks but i haven't i haven't been able to make a date with anybody yet to okay uh, come out and see it so we're going to continue that uh we believe it was uh gil lahuyer who had Jilly lahuyer who had done it before uh so we're going to try and bring him back if we can okay uh, just if there's any warranty to be had, you know, he might be able to assist with that. And he is not retired. He is retired. He is retired. Yeah. So he may or may not be available. Okay. Uh, well, we shouldn't waste any time if he's not available trying to get somebody else. Correct. Okay. And so, 
anticipate this as a uh, emergency expense once we get somebody yeah. lined up and can execute it. All right. Uh, moving on, uh, the Historical Society is interested in taking over the rest of the building, or I should say the second floor of the main building. Um, you know, the caretaker's apartment in the back uh, where we currently rent to Donnie Garrett, um, I believe is going to remain a caretaker's apartment for the building. Uh, what we're interested, what the Historical Society is interested in is the um, second floor of the front main building. Um, the lease is up for renewal. Uh, the Historical Society is not ready to take it over right now. So what they would like is for us to add an amendment in the lease agreement when it gets re-signed next month uh, that will allow for language for the lease to be terminated upon, uh, their the suggestion here is just reasonable notice. Uh, we could say 30 days or 60 days or you know whatever we propose. What's the exact date the lease is up? Give me a moment, Mike. Duncan, how imminent do you think the uh, Historical Society is to using the upstairs? Um, I would say that it's not imminent. Um, the other part, I don't know if you guys all got a copy of the letter from Dick or not, um, but the other part of that uh, commentary is that we fully recognize that this is going to be a, a process. Um, and to that end, the Historical Society voted to establish a committee. Um, the committee is comprised of Dean West, uh, Kelly Van Dorn, uh, Mary Jean Smith, and the committee recommended that I also be uh, a member of that committee for two reasons. One is that I am the select board's um, uh, designee to the board. And the second is that I was directly involved in the original uh, renovation work um, when, we, when we did the work. So uh, the short answer is uh, we don't see this as something happening right away. The long answer is it's possible that it could take place within uh, the one year term of the lease. So that's why we were you know, hoping to have some sort of notice requirement inserted in the lease. Okay. Nat? Yes, um, so we have budgeted um, for $16,925 of income from uh, rent for that building. Um, I'm guessing the majority of that is, is for that upstairs apartment. Um, I'm, I'd be interested to know if we were to um, give it over to the Historical Society, how that would play out um, just financially what happens with that $17,000 that we budgeted for income. Um, also, what is the actual cost, what has been the cost to the town for owning this bu building since, since we purchased it a number of years ago? Um, that, you know, $17,000 is a pretty good chunk but we've also put some work and some, um, some money into it. Um, I kind of like to get a sense of, and maybe the committee could help, help do this, um, just a sense of, of costs and, and incomes for the building. And if we are to lose that income, how does that affect us, our, our bottom line? So that income is entirely from the apartment the the historical society makes a contribution in lieu of rent yeah um for their portion and presumably uh the historical society would make the town an offer of some kind of additional compensation in lieu of rent for the the rest of the building to take over that part um, that's right but they ha they haven't made a specific offer yeah, and I'm saying, uh, in anticipating that offer, I'd, I'd kind of like to get some um, some background on 
if it's a responsible offer or not, if it's something that we can responsibly accept or if that's just gonna to be too expensive for us. Matt, if I can um, respond briefly, I, your points are well taken. Um, that is a major reason why we thought it was important to have a committee <clears throat> because those are the kinds of questions we would like to have answers to. Um, I think it would be wonderful if there were a select board member um, who was interested in participating um, at, at some level, you know, even if it's, um, <clears throat> you know, some prelim preliminary levels or whether it's uh, coalescing some questions that the board might have that they want answers to. Um, I think that's going to be a really important part of what the committee comes up with in just a, a very quick um, a very quick response is, <clears throat> yes, that's the revenue that you derive, <clears throat> but you're, you're also paying all of the utilities out of the collection of that rent. Um, so the immediate offset would be um, a reduction in, uh, you know, in the total cost of, of the building in terms of the utilities upstairs. Thank you. Any further board members? So basically, uh, we already addressed your first concern was the roof. Uh, I think we're, we gave, provided direction for Brian to <clears throat> pursue that. Uh, your second request is leaving open a opt out in the lease agreement for the renewal. And did you find that date, Brian? That is, it's, uh, it end, our current lease agreement ends at the end of June. End of June. Okay, so it'll be a July first <laughs> new yep. one. Um, Eric, go ahead. Mike. I, I have a question for uh, Duncan. Go uh, ahead, Duncan. Do you think it'd be cleaner now to end the lease and then start working, or you just don't want to? You're just not available to do that now. Uh <laughs> I think we are not ready to do that. <clears throat> and to Nat's point, um, you know, it certainly is revenue that you've budgeted for. Um, so, you know, the, the, the idea of an offset of the utilities, it's not gonna be an even offset. Obviously you're, you're deriving more in income than you are in expenses. Um, I, I would encourage, you know, based on conversations that we had as a board uh, last Wednesday, I would encourage a representative from the town to do an on-site inspection of the apartment um, to ensure that uh, the current terms of the lease agreement are being adhered to. <clears throat> um, but, you know, the simple answer, it was, we're certainly not ready um, and if you do, if you simply did terminate the lease, you're, you're going to be, we're, we're not in a financial position to make up the, the revenue that you would otherwise derive from the lease. Well, it's too bad, you know, because it would be kind of an insurance policy <clears throat> that we wouldn't have to worry about another leak upstairs. Yeah, hopefully you've got that one solved. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I just think of the of the tenant. You know, it might be easier to make a move this time of the year than uh, maybe at another time. Uh, it, which you know, when, when you're ready for it, you know, it might kind of put the tenant in a bind too. Yeah, you know, I we we didn't specifically um, talk about this or anticipate this, so you know, I'm I'm a little bit off the reservation here. But if if the board feels that they uh, want to simply um, uh, uh, terminate the lease uh, at the end of uh, at the end of June, I I doubt that historical society board members would have any um, issue or problem with that. I think that's really more of a much more of a maintenance question, you know, uh, maintenance of the overall building question for the select board and, and not really, um, you know, an issue that, that the historical society was, was wanting to weigh in on. I right. guess it's, I guess it's your, your, your uh, decision. 
<laughs> I would like to see it uh, uh, at the end of the lease, but unfortunately, there's no way to, to make up that income. So we'll probably just have to do uh, what your recommendation is uh, to have a stipulation in the lease uh, that we would reserve the option to break it. So, so I guess I would look for a motion. Is the board prepared to make directing Brian when he redraws up a lease that would give us that some kind of an out? Yes. So, okay, we do have a motion. Do we have a second? Not getting a second, the motion will die. And it's not rocket science board, really. No. It, it's motion. just giving them the option to to do something in favor of the historical society. Your motion died. That's wonderful. <laughs> so what's the board's <laughs> pleasure? Uh, I'd like to see I, I mean, we budgeted already. Um, I would like to see what that profit loss looks like, what it means to us in the next three years, um, and make sure that we're, you know, doing our due diligence when we're talking about money. I would agree with that. Uh, knowing the financial side of it's important. Um, at the end of the lease do you go in and uh, you know reveal how the apartment looks and everything brian or is there somebody for the town we typically do uh either myself or, or uh, somebody else will from public works will go through when we renew the lease um i was sorry, sorry either myself or donnie will go in and do it um sounds like that was a recommendation from the from the yeah the, from the historical, historical society. society board yeah uh, and, and we're due for our, our annual inspection mm -hmm. um i, think, I would just say I think that what, the, the specific request to add a contingent that allows us to get out during the annual term doesn't obligate us to making any particular decision in the future right and i also would just add that the motion that Mike made, giving us that opportunity and knowing the situation the historical society is uh, currently in, um, you know, it, it might, if they were happen to be ready next spring, you're talking about two months lost revenue. So th the impact in our budget year would, would be, uh, in the current year would be minimal. However, with that said, when we, sit down this fall and start building our budget for the, the following year, uh, fiscal year, we would want to be having that in the back of our mind when we uh, budget revenue cost on that building. Mike? Getting back to my emotion uh, that uh, seemed to have died by lack of a second, I, I doubt seriously if the uh, historical society is going to leave us in a lurch. Uh, I believe Duncan mentioned about other sources of funding uh, to kind of try to make up the difference. And I doubt seriously if they would vacate, have that apartment vacated without having some kind of a, uh, a vehicle uh, to, to make up the difference. Am I speaking out of turn, uh, Duncan? Um, no, I don't think you are, Mike, um, but that really would be the ultimate purpose of the committee. We, we absolutely recognize that there's money on the table here um, that needs to be dealt with, and we, we certainly appreciate the um, concerns being expressed by the select board uh, with regard to impact on budgets. You know, I guess we would also, you know, hope that the town would support an organization like the Historical Society, um, you know, to some degree, which you have absolutely done in the past. And we very much appreciate those, 
you know, those efforts too. So the bottom line is a little bit like our previous conversation. <laughs> we don't have uh, many, many details right now. That's something that we, um, you know, hoping the, uh, the committee can and will do. Um, you know, it's, if you decide that you don't want to do this for this current year because of the fiscal impacts, I think we can work around that. <clears throat> We're still going to um, <coughs> actively pursue, you know, our process and our intent would be to keep the board fully informed all, all along the way. And we would certainly, you know, value your input in that process. Well, I guess I'm going to go right back to my motion uh, in the first place <clears throat> and uh, to talk about, you know, breaking that lease, y you would still have to kind of, uh, it gives us the option, but before you actually went forward with a lot of these things, you'd come back to the board anyway, correct? Well, the lease is between you and the tenant. So, you, you know, you're not going to break the lease unless you're convinced that our proposal is a good proposal. Exactly. So uh, I, I don't see what the big deal is about putting that in the, in the lease myself. Okay, let me uh, reach out to Beth and Eben. Does that <clears throat> help you come closer to supporting this request or do you still have- I follow it all. I mean, if the tenants aren't living, aren't adhering to the lease, then we have it out. Uh, if they are, we're budgeting. I, I mean, the lease follows our fiscal budget. And I feel like if we're following our budget and the lease aligns with our budget, I don't really feel there's a need. I don't care, I guess, is what I'm saying. But I follow it as well. I just, it, I guess it could go in. It doesn't matter because they need to come to the board anyways before we get and terminated a, le terminated a lease. Just seems like there's a little too many unknowns in the financial side of things to just. I think before the board ever took action to break the lease with a, uh, a tenant, you know, we would have these discussions with the historical society. We would know, uh, yes, we're going to lose the revenue. <clears throat> we will also lose the expense and we will have some kind of a in lieu payment of the historical society. So come the end of the day, our net loss could be very minimal. I can't tell you what that would be right now, obviously. But. I'll make that motion again, Mr. Chairman. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Why don't you second it, Eric? <laughs> Lacking a second, the motion will die. The motion dies. I can't believe this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, the request was not approved. We'll, we'll work around it. Yep. All right. The next item is the Evergreen Cemetery. So, uh, Jackie Longley is requesting the purchase of four lots in Evergreen Ledge Cemetery. Uh, Sorry. Matt, you had a question? Yeah, I uh, do. There were, there were two <laughs> other items on our uh, on our request list. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Should I go ahead? Yeah, please go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the letter back up. If you feel lucky, that is, uh, Duncan. <laughs> so um, uh, the third request was uh, hopefully um, uh, inconsequential. We we had uh, asked the board uh, several years running to have public works department do a little bit of uh, grading and excavating around the back side of the building, <clears throat> which will help reduce water damage uh, to the building. <clears throat> I actually got in there with my little backhoe and did some work. Um, and I did some um, repair work on the foundation uh, with some quick plug, which is, which has certainly helped. Um, but we, we would very much appreciate the support of the board in um, asking you um, if he can work that into his schedule. 
Can you uh, take that, Brian? Yeah. Okay. I, can I just make a note? I, I support that as well, but I also want to um, just make it clear that the, the first priority for any um, public works time away from highway time for Hughes crew is, is to the um, Ted Alexander Welcome Center that we are under a deadline for that. Uh, we've made some serious, pretty serious commitment there. Um, so hopefully he can get to both, but the, the priority really needs to be that, that Welcome Center. Yep. Duly noted. I'm in, involved with that project as well. So I, I, I get that. Um, I, I will say that this is something that we have been promised about three years running and it hasn't gotten done. So I'd love to see it done um, if it can be done before winter. That's and the, the final thing um, was the Historical Society voted to ask the board to, uh, with regard to Grow Cemetery, to make an attempt to determine the boundaries of the cemetery and to place a fence around the cemetery. Uh, we realized that this might not be, um, you know, an immediate uh, thing given some of the um, issues potentially involved. Um, but we feel the Historical Society feels Grove Cemetery is a very significant historic resource um, to the town and deserves, uh, deserves your, uh, your uh, support. And at a minimum, a fence is a requirement of state statute. Um, Duncan, do you have any feel for how hard it would be to find the established boundary? Yeah. Uh, I don't. Um, that, as most of you probably know, was originally part of the township of Sterling. <clears throat> um, I do not believe Rosemary can, if she's there, she may be able to uh, kick in on this. I don't believe any of the land records of Sterling um, made its way to Johnson. I believe those records are in Morris Town. Um, I would be willing to volunteer to go to Morris Sound or communicate with Sarah Haskins uh, to see if, if there's any documented information about the size of the plot or the dimensions of the plot. Short of that, I've been there. I, there are remnants of existing fences around there. Um, you could also talk with the neighbor and find out if you can get concurrence with the neighbor. Um, you know, there are probably ways of doing it. Um, you know, one way would be to hire a surveyor and, you know, have that done. That, that of course, is going to cost some money. But So do you think that the Wise's first course of action would be to explore the Morristown option? I, I certainly do. And again, I would be as a historical society board member and somebody who's interested in cemeteries, um, I would be um, willing to volunteer to uh, go to Marshtown, as, assuming that I can get in and see the land records um, at some point in the near distant future. Um, I'd be willing to do that. How's the rest of the board feel about that? Whatever saves us the most money I support. <laughs> Agreed. These cemeteries keep coming back and haunting us. <laughs> no, no, no pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay. Was there any other requests? Nope. That's it. Uh, well, okay. uh, the fence. Um, so, you know, I, I guess one step at a time, if we can determine what the boundaries are, um, our recommendation or our request to you is um, that you consider um, reestablishing a fence there. Okay. Can you, if you can establish the boundary, <laughs> then uh, then we'll talk. Okay. This may uh, not be the time to build a fence with the price of building material right now. Uh, so, uh, we'll, we'd have to get an estimate on it. We we may or may not be able to <laughs> afford a fence in our our current cemetery maintenance budget, but right. Um, but it may not be that easy to establish the border either. Yeah, we, we've got we got some. Time. We've got a little bit of time while while uh, while we figure out the border to uh, 
pinch pennies and see if we can come up with the money for a fence. <clears throat> so was that all of your requests, Duncan, from the Historical Society? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a hand up. I'm assuming it's to do uh, reference to the Historical Society. I, I assume so. Hi there. Thank you. It, it is. It's a little off topic, but just a three, 30 second request. Um, Duncan, I noticed that the, the, fl the American flag in front of the Historical Society is pretty tattered. And I didn't know if that was the responsibility of, of the Historical Society to replace or the town. I just thought it would be nice if that was replaced um, before Memorial Day. Good question. I don't know. Um, I don't know if Lois is on or not. I'm not sure that we have replaced those in the past or not. It's a it's a town owned building. I don't know. Oh, tells you how old the flag is. Then. <laughs> I don't remember replacing it, but maybe it came with the property. Yeah, I oh, don't Lois. remember replacing it, but that doesn't mean that we're not responsible for it. Yeah, Lois is on. And maybe she's got some recollection. Okay, I'll ask her to unmute. Thank you, Lois. I, I think that um, Tom Carney has replaced it in the past. So I'm willing to give him a, a heads up tomorrow and see if, if he can do that. Well, thank you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to help with that too if it's if it's something I just it's just something I've noticed and wanted to bring up since we're all here talking about the historical society. So thank you. What time is he going to be there tomorrow? Do you know? Lois? What oh, I have no idea. I have to, to give him a call. Well, tell him I'll contribute to it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to prolong, Eric, I, but I, I just wanted to acknowledge Duncan's request that Select Board be involved somehow with this committee and, and contribute. I personally don't have bandwidth to do that um, at this time, um, but I will contribute some some ideas and questions by email, and I hopefully somebody from the Select Board will stand up, uh, step up. Yeah. Thank you, Nat. Um, I don't. Speaking for myself and probably one other member who's on the uh, union negotiation team, I'm feeling fairly stretched myself. Uh, I can do it. Thank you, Eben. <laughs> nice of the rookie to step up. Thank you, Eben. So you have your uh, select board representation there, Duncan. Thank you, Eben. Okay, are we now ready to go back to the Evergreen? Sure. Yes. So, uh, Jackie, Longley's interested in purchasing uh, four plots. Duncan has been out to check the plots and he's staked their, uh, their space. They're along the back edge of the property near the western side of the property. So they are in the older portion of the cemetery, but they are well clear of existing uh, plots. Are the stakes still there, uh, Brian? Uh, they were before the winter. I'll have to go back and look, and I might call you to come back and restake, but. Okay, happy to do that. So the request before the board is we have to authorize the sale of any uh, cemetery plots in this cemetery anyway. So I'll move. Let's see this die by lack of a second. <laughs> there is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Did you, did you say die, Mike? Yes, yes. We do have a motion and we do have a second. Any more discussion? And we are confident because of the location that we're not, uh, you know, on top of other graves or anything like that. Yeah, they're they have a good amount of space. Uh, okay. They're they're well clear of any uh, any registered grave sites. Okay. Any other questions or comments? 
Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You guys have Thank it. you, board. <laughs> Can I make one comment about Evergreen Ledge? Go ahead. So a couple of years ago, I volunteered um, to cut back the brush uh, along the property lines. And the board agreed to uh, rent a brush hog from uh, Johnson Hardware and Rental. Uh, it's been a couple of years. It would probably behoove us to stay on top of that. I am more than happy to volunteer my time to do that if the uh, town would be willing to rent the brush hog again from Johnson Hardware and Rental. Go ahead and do it. I yeah. would look for that's well within our cemetery maintenance budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you can take it out of cemetery budget, go for it. Thanks for Thank doing you. that too, Duncan. Yeah, thank you, Duncan. Looks really good, to tell you the truth. And I believe you had another request for, was it the Grove Cemetery, the uh, spray and go or whatever you call it? Oh, um, well, I, I can put that in a more formal uh, a more formal letter. I, I, as most of the board probably knows, I have been working in Whiting Hill uh, for the past few years. Um, I think it would be really a great idea to try and do some stone cleaning in uh, Plot Cemetery and grow is, grow is another one. Um, I have been using a product called Wet and Forget. It's um, it's a relatively cheap way to clean a lot of stones um, and the results are, have been really, really good. Um, I don't need specific action on that tonight, but um, it's something that maybe you guys can think about. Okay. Thank you. So I believe we're all set now with Evergreen. Yep. Okay. Uh, retirement for Ann Mullings and um, like I sent out an email to select board, uh, typically for a retiree, we have given some kind of a gift as well as a proclamation. And I sent you a uh, proclamation that I drew up. It would be presented on her celebration day of June 19th. So first of all, I guess I would look for a motion on the board approving the proclamation as presented. So move to this did not make it into your packet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So anybody interested can see the uh, Basically, it's something the town has done for some number of years when somebody retires or special recognition uh, naming the day in their honor and the day that would be named is her celebration day of June 19th when she's going to have some kind of a retirement party it's signed by the full, full select board and usually presented at the celebration I'll second Matt, Matt's motion we have a motion and a second any discussion Seeing none, all those in just favor, that, go oops, ahead. Sorry. Just, go a, ahead. Um, just uh, informational, um, June 19th is also Juneteenth. So we may also see some other activity happening that day as well. Oh, okay, duly noted. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And then also typically there's some kind of a gift in, um, and it's usually something appropriate for the individual and I'm looking to Rosemary to provide some thoughts or guidance here. I have been thinking about this. It'll probably be some type of jewelry. Okay. So would you look for uh, some not to exceed amount, and then you would pick out the jewelry? Yes. Okay. What's Spore's pleasure? Do you Let have any? Go ahead. Do you have a number there in mind, Rosemary? No, I haven't even started looking yet. 
What have okay. we done in the past? I it's always been a few hundred dollars, uh, and it's an individual thing. Do you have a number we can put into a motion authorizing Rosemary? Oh, let's do up to 500. Okay, not to exceed 500. Is there a motion? No, I'll make that motion. We have okay. a motion. We have a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Rosemary, for doing that. You're and uh, Thank you. I'll print out that uh, proclamation and drop it by the town clerk's office uh, tomorrow. Okay. Taking a short break, Mr. Chairman. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, I guess that's a good opportunity to talk about the reopening. All right. So you have in your packet the uh, most recent update to the uh, reopening that we've come up with uh, for allowing the use of uh, the common area, the uh, second floor of the municipal building. Um, we are, this is a little bit like when we were shutting everything down. Uh, we're getting changes every day when it comes to recommended guidance for reopening. But this is our, our current draft that uh, is available for people who need, who want to use the uh, municipal space. Now, this is, is as recommended by the uh, emergency management team. Any board member comments? Sure, it's going to be changing fairly quickly. Yeah. yeah. Governor. Yeah, this, this will change rapidly. Um, other things to know, uh, I am working with the village to reopen our uh, employee health guidelines. Uh, so we're going to be looking at making changes to that, which is kind of our first step before reopening the municipal office for the public. Uh, so I don't have a date yet on reopening the, the building to the public, but we're starting down that. Did you share the upstairs reopening with the seniors? Uh, yes, but okay. only in draft form. I have to send them the final. Okay. Um, just because right when I was going to send it, we got new word about masks and other things changing. And uh, But yeah, so I'm gonna set, share this with them that this is, is current. Um, for now. So I would expect within a month or so, we, we will be able to at least be ha having uh, in-person board meetings, but um, we're, it, things are unraveling very quickly. <laughs> yeah, uh, the advice we're giving is, well, it's a requirement that uh, you can have a board or committee meeting in person and broadcast for the audience uh, that is permissible under the guidelines that we were and uh, conditions that we've received for uh, COVID, the COVID variations on the uh, open meeting law. Um, that's gonna be a little bit more complicated than hosting a meeting where everybody's remote. Uh, so there's, likely to be some tech support and other assistance that we have to give for committees that want to meet in person with their board and then provide a, a remote connection for the audience. And as long as we have uh, real hard limits on who can attend, uh, that's probably gonna be a requirement for quite a while that they'll have to provide an electronic venue to participate. Okay, so basically it's just an informational thing. Uh, yep. If anybody's got any comments, questions, expect, you know, this is gonna be a fairly regular discussion for the next few meetings. How are we um, communicating this out widely? 
or do we have this on our website that's easily, you know, somebody doesn't have to dig? It's going up on the front page of the website and uh, I've emailed it out uh, to a couple of people and I'm going to be emailing it out to all of our boards, commissions, and other uh, people who have expressed an interest. Okay. We should probably use social media for this too and get it out on Facebook and others. I'm not suggesting we want to advertise. So, I mean, just to be really real, because I feel like we should, it's our responsibility. Um, while our infection rate is going down, it's still prevalent, uh, it's still happening. Uh, we shouldn't pretend it isn't. Um, so I'm not suggesting that we, you know, are highly encouraging lots of people to come in and use our common space. But, and I do think we need to keep our practices, you know, of cleaning and disinfecting often in place. Um, but I just wanna, you know, be real on multiple fronts and make sure that we're being open about what's out there. Thank you, Beth. Any further comments? Okay, next item is an ATV committee discussion. And uh, Brian, you want to lead this off? Yeah, so uh, with the vote on, uh, on the ATV discussion, there was a lot at, at town meeting, it was a pretty clear vote that what the language that was there was to eliminate uh, ATV use. And there was a pretty clear uh, community discussion and vote that that was not on the table, that eliminating ATVs is not something that the community supports. Uh, but we heard from a number of people during the discussions that they had different ideas about what form it should take. And there's also that if we're going to make the um, access to Route 15 uh, to Main Street in the downtown permanent, uh, we are going to have to amend our uh, ATV ordinance for that anyway. So that combines to a, an opportunity to kind of look at the ATV ordinance as a whole. Uh, and there's a lot of community interest in, in doing that. What I suggest rather than, what I suggest for this is trying to kind of divide it into two parts of looking at what we want ATVs to look like regardless of location. So what do we want the ATVs to look like in general? And, and to further that, I put in our, our packet uh, the VLCT model ATV policy. We can make some modifications to it if we feel we need to, but this is a pretty good starting. The second step, once we've completed this, will then be to go back and evaluate some of our roads and make some decisions about uh, what roads we want to include and don't want to include. Um, I really think of these as two separate steps, and I, I recommend that we undertake them as two separate steps. You know, there'll be a little, there'll be some consolidation of what we make sure that's all in line, but uh, I don't think that it really works well for us to try and do, try and tackle everything at once. Um, and we don't have the data of how the this has worked out for the uh, roads that we gave kind of provisional permission for the, the test case uh, of our downtown roads anyway. So we need a little bit more time to know what kind of effect that's going to have. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that, with this. Uh, so my suggestion is that we put this out, that we're looking at this model policy and solicit comments and uh, spend a little bit of time gathering comments. We can have a couple of listening sessions uh, where we hear feedback from community members, uh, try and facilitate some discussions between ATV supporters and th those that have some problems with ATVs and um, kind of give it a good hearing for uh, a little while um, and come up with a policy that hopefully works for the community. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? Do you... Mike? Well, you said a number of people were uh, interested in this. How many people are actually interested, Brian, in kind of reopening this? 
Uh, I've heard from two individuals since uh, the town vote, but if you remember a couple of our town informational meetings, we had a few people who said that they were going to vote against uh, the language that was presented in the ballot, but that they did want to talk about ATVs. Well, I, I would say that there are 538 people in town that don't want to talk about it, that they want to leave things the way they are. So why are we even talking about this? It was resoundingly voted down uh, by 62% said no. That's not even close. So I don't think we should even be talking about it. Well, the, the vote was on eliminating. I I under, yeah, I understand what the vote was. And, and so people are interested in it. Well, of course, you, you could argue and say there are 307 people that are interested but they were in the minority. So I think we just need to leave things the way they are. It took us how long to pass the first ordinance in the first place? And now we're gonna to try to uh, reinvent the wheel again? I don't think so. I think the voters told us what they wanted to do. And I think we should uh, honor the voters. Nat? So is, is what you're saying, Mike, that you wouldn't support any changes to the ATV ordinance at all? Well, if you're trying to box me into a corner uh, and talk about the proposed change by driving into the village, if the ATV club gets uh, okay from the state, uh, that's something that the whole board agreed to last year. Right, so, so the, the board agreed to a, a one-year trial. Trial, and, and that would be amending the ordinance for that to happen, correct? No. Okay. So if we're not amending anything, then we just leave it alone then. Well, we would have to go into our current ATV ordinance uh, if we're going to make it a permanent access to the village, yes. Okay. So we're, we're talking about a trial, and this is, the trial hasn't even started yet. Right. Yeah. It's for this uh, summer. It was a one year, one season only trial. But it hasn't even been approved by the state yet. As I understand, no, not yet. So, so why are we even opening up this discussion about this uh, ATV ordinance that we already have? I would say because we know that the ATV club is going to come back and, and ask for permanent access. Um, I mean, I, you know what, actually, maybe we don't know that. Maybe that's a wild assumption on my part, but uh, it's something that I uh, anticipate. And I wanted, I think the community should, uh, you know, we should get ahead of it instead of reacting. I respect your decision, Matt, but I, I think the voters spoke quite loudly that they don't even want us to mess with the ordinance. I guess I look for Beth and Eben, some thoughts. Um, I was already asked uh, at the informational meetings before Beth and I were elected and she was asked too, if we'd respect the wishes of the voters on this topic. Um, so I stand by my word and I respect the wishes of the voters and their wishes are to leave it alone until this probationary period's up. So the vote was about repealing and I agree with Evan. I respect the, the vote, which was not to repeal the ordinance. Uh, and I stand by that right now. However, um, if this is about a one year trial, a one season trial, so I forget a year, a one season trial and the one season has, has not yet occurred um, how do we know if the trial is successful or not? Um, I, I mean, I kind of feel like I, I don't want to seem wishy-washy, but I am a little bit because we don't know. We haven't had it. We haven't had the trial. Um, so we don't really know the impact. And I hear a gnat on, you know, getting ahead of things. I usually am all about being proactive, but I think in this case, the use of the word trial over a year is time 
uh, and it hasn't yet begun, I don't think we should put the cart before the horse in this case. Fair point. So I'm sensing from the board that uh, there's not a large amount of interest in starting this process yet. I think we will, if the trial goes through the summer and, um, you know, if, if we decide that we want to change the ordinance to allow access to the village, uh, then we will have to start in the fall looking at our ordinance and going through it. And, uh, and once we adopt it, um, just knowing the history of the ATVs uh, in this community, there probably will be a petition to raised. It's very, it's not a huge threshold to get the number of signatures and it will require a town-wide vote. Um, but with that said, uh, at least to this point, the, the voters have been very supportive of the ATVs. So- Eric, may, may I? Go ahead, Beth. Um, I just, um, I just wanna say, I also think that there's a lot of things to consider. And I think Lois had some really good points when we talked about this not too long ago where we did have an ATV committee in the past. Um, and I think there's probably some validity in trying to resurrect some of that information or maybe you know gather it from folks who are on the a prior committee um, to bring that to how to structure an ordinance and a vote, you know, assuming we get there. I don't wanna presume we're gonna get there, but assuming we do, um, I do think that's an important piece of it all. So. Um, mm -hmm. I even in that case, I, I'm not sure I would want to be the one to draft it. I would look for the help of and feedback from others, um, mm -hmm. frankly. Okay, we'll cross that bridge when we come there, come to it. Uh, okay, Brian, I'm not sensing a lot of uh, interest okay. in this time. However, oh. and if there's no further board member comments, I will open it up to uh, the public. All right, uh, I see Kim first. So I just wanted a clarification. Um, for, if the select board was the author of the ATV ordinance um, and the, the way that it's structured, the enforcement hasn't been um, carried through that the ordinance sort of talks about, are there any things that citizens can do that have issues? Um, and how would the select board carry through with that? Thank you. Um, if there's violations of the ordinance, then anybody who, who has an issue should be calling the sheriff's office. That's our enforcement po uh, police. All right. Uh, next up, I've got Eric. Uh, hey folks, I'm, I'm glad to see so much zeal in carrying out this non-binding resolution from the voters on town meeting day. And I, it, with non-binding resolutions in mind, I, I wonder if you'll be tackling the uh, nearly as popular merger of the town and village that was also passed by a non-binding resolution by the voters by just 49 votes short of this overwhelmingly popular uh, ATV thing. So. Um, are we going to attack that with the same enthusiasm you are about holding fast on the on the ATVs? The select board has already taken a position of starting those discussions, and we left it up to the trustees when they feel they are ready. Thank you, Eric. Yep. All right. Any other uh, public comment on the ATVs? Nope. Uh, I saw Neil Shepard. Okay, go ahead, Neil. Hi, thanks. So, you know, I think that uh, the select board should not only be the ones to allow ATVs on the roads, but also be the ones to create the rules and regulations that govern the way that ATVs ride on the roads. It's not up to VASID to create the rules and regulations. They're a club. It really is the select board who is approving that and then should make you know, the rules and regulations 
uh, and Mike, to your point that uh, the pro ATV uh, folks won the vote, that there still were 300 plus who uh, voted, who were opposed. And uh, that's a considerable number of people, not just two or three. And they have concerns about ATVs on the roads. And I'd guess a lot of them live on the roads where the ATVs travel and they probably have they're directly affected by some of the things we've discussed in the past, safety issues, uh, speed limits, and, uh, and uh, enforcement issues. And I would say that the town sheriff has said many times, Eric, that uh, he's not interested in trying to enforce, uh, nor do they have the capacity to enforce um, speed limits or anything else. They don't even own ATVs. And so I think there are many questions about enforcement, about speed limits. I think um, I remember Ken talking to the board saying, you know, how do we put up uh, speed? How do we put up the signs for speed limits if we're gonna reduce it in some places to 15 miles an hour? There are many questions that are unanswered that I would think the board should be responsible for since you are taking responsibility for allowing ATVs on the roads. And if you as a body um, can't make the rules and regulations, then uh, an ATV committee could be appointed to at least examine um, rules and regulations. I was on the previous ATV um, committee back in 2006, and we had people from all sides of the spectrum, ATV riders, people who didn't want them on the roads, people in the middle, and it was a pretty good group and fruitful discussions. And we did present a series of rules and regulations that you know, we were suggested to the select board. And at that time, of course, that board uh, didn't really pay much attention to it, but I think that a different uh, board presents a different opportunity. And so the, a, a, an ATV committee could try to um, talk about some of the difficulties and maybe arrive at some kind of uh, settlement or compromise on some of the most pressing issues and then present them to the select board. And uh, I hope that, that you'll see your way to go forward with that rather than say it's a closed issue, the majority has spoken. I think the select board also should um, uh, represent the whole town and there were 300 people voting against it and it would be a great opportunity for both sides to come together and have a discussion and I, I see many of these things as unresolved issues especially how to enforce speed limits and other things how to uh, deal with noise issues when there are large groups of uh, riders together and so forth I'll stop there thank you Thank you, Neil. All right, and uh, Kirsten. Yeah, I also want to say that um, I was experience a lot of, uh, experiencing a lot of riders riding after hours last summer um, after the 10 p.m. time that the riders are are supposed to be done for the day. Well, it would go on 11 p.m midnight and I did call the sheriff, but nothing happened. Also, um, the sheriff said there's nothing really that they could do. So what are we supposed to do when we have problems like this? It would be great if we could have a group of people, some who want ATVs, others who maybe have problems and we could discuss the issues and and like Neil said, I'm just reiterating what he said about you know taking it to the select board and and getting the support because I don't see um, and also there's a lot of other issues like yielding laws are, are are the yielding laws for pedestrians and cyclists are are those um, if if you're on a narrow class four road for example. What do you do? You know, do you stop and wait for 12 ATVs to go by, or do they stop and let you go by? 
what are the laws? Is that in the ordinance? Is it written in there? I don't think so. So I really think that regardless of the trial that's going to be happening when the um, when the state gives the authority, regardless of the trial in town, what about everything that's going on in the background, back roads? Who do we turn to um, for that? So that's just my input. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Okay. And uh, Kyle? Great, thank you. Yeah, I think some some very good points have been made and, and I just wanna, you know, also reiterate the importance of, of, you know, a municipality, a local government to encourage healthy conversation around a table um, or in Zoom if needed um, to, uh, you know, to bring, to bring folks together around this table to have these hard conversations, to hash through some things and get to the other side, you know, as hopefully as friends and with some resolution and with some really good input. And I think that that it's really short-sighted to just kind of cut this idea um, at the knees when there's um, like either Neil or Kirsten said, there's a real opportunity here for, for to bring the community back, you know, together in this way and have these hard conversations and come through on the other side. So regardless of how the vote went, I think this is a really important exercise um, for the community <laughs> and also for the select board. And, um, and, and I remember Nat that you were very, you were very, um, you know, very uh, into this idea before the vote and, and said several times that you hoped and expected that this, you know, that this conversation and this discussion group would happen. So, um, and I thought that was a great idea then, and I still think it's a great idea now. And I hope, I hope you see the value in that. So thank you. Thank you, Carl. I, and I do, I, I believe I've expressed that. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead, Mike. Uh, uh, last year when we approved uh, this trial basis, uh, it was uh, a unanimous board decision for this trial and Kyle News was a part of it and she did vote in the affirmative. I just want that to be part of the record here. Eric, may I? Beth, go ahead. Um, I just want to, so I've done a little bit of research on ATVs because clearly it's important that we're answering questions in an educated way. And admittedly, I'm not super educated, but I've tried to do my homework. Um, and there are a lot of laws that are clearly defined in the state um, in state statute around ATV and the fact that they are required to yield to pedestrians and motor vehicles, for example. Um, and also there are civil violations that are clearly defined. Um, and I think, um, if you're calling a sheriff depart sheriff's department um, and they're not acting, I mean, they're responding, but, you know, maybe they can only do so much. I don't know. But if they're not, you know, adhering to what those statutes are, I do agree that, you know, it's we contract with our law enforcement and it's our job to hold law enforcement accountable. Um, so um, I just want to throw that out there. So uh, for what it's worth, I hear the frustration around some of these violations because clearly there are violations out there and I think there are obligations and those obligations are, if you're experiencing them you need to report them to the local club as well as, you know, you should be able to call law enforcement if it's, you know, done and gone. There's maybe very limited things they can do about it. Um, but if the, you know, they can catch violators and they can issue um, civil, I mean, uh, monetary penalties, you know, we should be doing that and we should be encouraging it. And if you can get a license plate, grab it. If you can, you know, whatever you can capture. But anyway, I just, don't, I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Thank you, Beth. I'll just uh, remind the board, we are about 10 minutes over on our schedule and we're already scheduled to go 1030. 
Does the board want to continue with this discussion or move on? Move on. Any further input? Okay. I agree. If we're not going to cover any, we should move on. Uh, I think before we go into executive session, we probably ought to take up the couple of items that you added, Brian, the Welcome yep. Center spending. So first, uh, the Welcome Center, um, we have obtained the uh, administrative amendment permit for the, uh, uh, excuse me, for, for the Welcome Center. Um, so that is still in an appeal period. Uh, so we haven't received the first uh, segment of money yet. Um, we've also received the, uh, the permission from VTRANS, uh, uh, the railway department for the work that we needed to cover inside their right of way. So we have all the permits and everything in order. So that uh, will grant us the first segment of money. Um, to that end, that segment will be spent could be spent pretty quickly uh, by Howard Romero to secure, um, excuse me, to secure the uh, funding, to secure the services of Brian Rollinitis as our chosen contractor for that project and uh, to secure uh, materials to get started. Uh, it's $15,000. That's all gonna be spent very quickly uh, on those two items. Okay, so you're seeking uh, seeking approval for uh, Howard Romero and myself to spend up to fifteen thousand dollars on uh, contractor fees and uh, building materials. What's Boar's pleasure? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. I have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, seeing five is saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you, Brian. Noise waiver. Field days has applied for a uh, noise, uh, noise permit. Okay. What's the Sports? event? Say again? Is it for field days, the event, or is it for a special yes. wedding on a different day? Oh, yeah, okay. for, for field days. They they have to do this under our noise ordinance and uh, every year and we typically just you know give them the the waiver. Yeah. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Identical to previous years. Uh, at this point, for the for the noise, yes. I doubt that the event is going to look exactly like it did last time. Sure. They were sure. present, but. Noise-wise? Noise waiver, yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And as I see it, we have no further items until discussion on employee evaluation. We will come out of an executive session to probably make an adjustment on an employee's salary that's being... Uh, after a six month probation, we will then go back into two more executive sessions to talk about uh, contract negotiations and uh, purchase of a new gravel pit. If there's no further business for the public outside the executive session, I would look for a motion to enter into executive session. I motion that we enter into executive session to discuss Employee evaluation as allowed by 1VSA 313A1 with a friendly invite for Brian Story and Hugh Albright. We have motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have motion, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? And motion passes. Show us in executive session at 954. Thank you, everyone. You can stay in the Thank waiting you. room if you want. Eric, are we yep. allowed to combine executive yep. sessions instead of bouncing in and out? We have to bounce in and out. We do? Okay. Yeah. It, 
might be permissible, although I've never gotten a ruling on it. I'm pretty sure I read it from the league's uh, uh, filings, briefings that they send out after that was, what was it, the open meeting law changes, I guess, that they said you yeah. couldn't. Are you, are you getting a hold of Hugh, Brian? Uh, give me a second to do the waiting room. If you want, if you've got his number and want to invite him, you can go ahead. Mike um, might have to do that. Uh, but like we said, the uh, it's kind of up to you if you want to see the written evaluation first, and then you may or may not. Uh, care to invite you or session at 1003 next item is the board prepared to make a motion on said employee completing six month probation and increase two steps is that what you want? And recognize the two certifications. Okay. So move. We have a motion. Do we want to name the employee? Do we have to name the employee? I would. Mark LaHuyer. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. The motion is on Mark LaHuyer. Uh, can you restate your motion again, Mike? Well, you just did. We recognize him. Uh, he's completed his probationary period, and we're increasing him to steps. OK. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? OK. I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session to for discussions on uh, employee contract negotiations. So move, Mr. Chairman, uh, under one VSA, three one three A one. We have a second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Those opposed. Show us in executive session at 10.04. And for the public, we will not be taking any further action outside of executive session. Do not anticipate anyhow. You're more than welcome to hang out. All right, give me a couple seconds to move everybody. We have motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Show us in executive session at 1020. And for those of you in the public, uh, we do not anticipate we will take any action. And this is the last item we will have for the evening. But you're more than welcome to stick around. Mm -hmm.